It's time for Lady Wolverine Basketball. The community, come watch. You're going to be pleasantly surprised when you see uh, just how hard these girls work and what they bring. I'm excited. I've got all the confidence in the world. Defensively, we're going to get it done. We're going to hold teams to one shot. You're going to see us push the floor and transition. You're going to see us a college-style basketball. To get us ready for tip-off, let's go courtside with the voice of the Lady Wolverines, Jared Anderson. And a very good Friday evening to you. Welcome to Cheyenne South High School. I am Jared Anderson, joined alongside Jason Peterson, our camera operator and technical guru here as uh, he has been all season long. We are in the midst of exciting junior varsity action right now. Riverton boys are on top of Cheyenne South's boys in JV action 50 to 46 with about a minute remaining in JV play. This uh, Lady Wolverine varsity game was supposed to get going at six o'clock. We are already past that and we're ultimately gonna be about half an hour late. Uh, looks kind of like we were on the same schedule we were yesterday with uh, this game not starting until about half an hour after it was projected to and uh, looks like we're just gonna keep going a half an hour late here on day two of the James Johnson Winter Classic. Again, it's the Riverton Lady Wolverines and Cheyenne South Bison, our first of two, coming up here on county10.com and 105.1 Jack FM. Just a quick reminder, as always, for our radio audience that if you're interested in watching these games, we've got the video up now for you. Just head over to YouTube, search for County 10, hit the live button, and you can watch uh, not only Riverton basketball tonight, but Lander basketball is also going live here in just a few minutes as the Lander boys are at a tournament in Pinedale. Wyatt Barijka bringing you that action. So all kinds of viewing options as far as Fremont County sports here on County 10's YouTube channel. And if it's easier for you too, uh, there is a link set up at county10.com on the homepage where you can watch live there. Cheyenne South enters tonight's contest on uh, the girls' side at three and four overall. Riverton is sitting at two and six. They've both played one game thus far in this James Johnson Winter Classic. Yesterday, South beat Rollins in a defensive slugfest, 29-26. to 26. Uh, Actually, take that back. That was earlier this season. They beat Evanston in a slugfest yesterday, 42-35. Uh, to 35. Ev uh, Rollins uh, was the common opponent between these two teams. Riverton's two wins so far this season are against the Lady Outlaws. And uh, they got the better of Rollins in more decisive fashion than South did both times they played the Lady Outlaws. So not the only common opponent here on the young season. Yesterday, Riverton lost to Natrona County High School 82-63. to NC just shot the lights out yesterday, especially in the first half. They put up 46 first half points. And uh, we will chat with Coach Bosner a little bit here coming up on the Porter's Tailgate Show about that effort last night. He's still very proud of his girls. Despite the uh, sizable loss, he took away a lot of silver linings there and likes the direction that they're heading. Uh, again, uh, Riverton and Cheyenne South do up here in uh, a little over 10 minutes. We are watching Junior Varsity Boys action, where if you're keeping track with 43 seconds to go, Riverton's on top of Cheyenne South, 51 to 46. The girls' Junior Varsity team fell to Cheyenne South earlier in the day from this gym. It is filling up here real uh, well for the varsity action. The band has filed in. It is always a spirited atmosphere at Cheyenne South High School. They've been uh, established since 2011. That's when uh, Cheyenne got the third high school. Of course, East and Central have long uh, histories here in uh, Wyoming academics and athletics, but 2011, they decided they needed to open that third Cheyenne High School, enter the Cheyenne South Bison, and Cheyenne South's ladies in that 13-year run have never made it to a state tournament, so they would like to change that. Brody Epler is their head coach in his third season. Epler, through his first two years with the program, went just 1-44 and 44 overall. He's already got three wins this season, so he's tripled what he's done uh, in the win-loss column in the first two years, but again, uh, never been to state, so Cheyenne South 
has that circled as their goal this season. Mike Bosner says he's feeling pretty good about his girls. They've got a lot to clean up, especially in transition. Says they need to feed the paint more, get tougher rebounding, and to eliminate some of those unforced errors. A few of the players that we'll keep an eye on in this upcoming varsity matchup. Cheyenne South led by Jordan Brennan, who averages about 10 points a game, 9.8 officially, 8.7 rebounds per game, so she leads them in scoring and on the glass. Amaya Smith averages 9.5 points per game. Carlina Ward averages 6.5 points per ball game. Riverton Junior Varsity boys have officially knocked off Cheyenne South, 52-46. to A nice come-from-behind win for them. They were trailing about midway through the fourth quarter and come back and get the victory. Riverton ladies, players to keep an ear and eye out for Paisley Jackson, their leading scorer at 15 points per game. She upped that average a little bit last night with 22 points. Haley Ingstrom has uh, the leading rebound uh, in the stat column, is the leading rebounder on this team with uh, nearly eight rebounds per game, 7.8 rebounds and five points per game. Taylor Leesburg averages five points per game. We Too Cloud Horse improved her average of five points per game last night too, scoring at 22 points as well. She was our Tyler Watson State Farm player of the game for the Lady Wolverines last night was we to Cloud Horse and Coach Bosner is uh, just thrilled with her effort which you'll hear coming up as part of our conversation in the Porter's tailgate shell. Looks like we're about 10 minutes away from tip-off so we'll take a quick time out. When we come back we will hear from the head coach of the Lady Wolverines Mike Bosner. That's due up here in just a moment. Lady Wolverines and Cheyenne South Lady Bison coming at you on 105.1 Jack FM and County10.com. Mountain View Supply, your local experts in fire and water. We got everything you need for new installs to accessories, and don't forget our great selection of stoves, grills, and spas. We've been serving Wyoming for over 40 years, so you know you can trust us for quality products and expert service. Visit portersmvs.com or stop by our Riverton or Casper locations today. Porter's Mountain View Supply, located on 750 East Sunset Drive in Riverton. Myers Gambles is your one-stop shop for furniture, mattresses, and appliances in Lander, Wyoming. We have an unbeatable selection of furniture for your living room, bedroom, and dining room. Plus, we have the latest trends in home furnishings. Our mattresses are comfortable and affordable, and our appliances are built to last. Whether you're looking for a new TV, sofa, or refrigerator, we have the perfect finish, style, and function for your home. Visit us at 420 Main Street in Lander, or check out our website, landergambles.com. Read all about the Fremont County Sports Weekend at County10.com. Welcome you back here to a spirited Cheyenne South High School. Again, it is always a great atmosphere here with South. The band is playing, cheerleaders cheering, and a spirited student section here as well. Riverton Lady Wolverines and Cheyenne South Lady Bison, the first of our doubleheader here on County10.com and 105.1 Jack FM. I'm Jared Anderson, joined by Jason Peterson. This is the Porter's Tailgate Show, thanks to Porter's Supply Company at the corner of uh, Federal and Sunset in Riverton, your source for stoves, uh, spas, and pellets. They've got great customer service, and they're ready to help you, especially during the harsh Wyoming winter. They can help keep your home heat and I'm telling you, it's hot tub weather, so uh, Porter Supply Company can help there too at Sunset and Federal in Riverton. Earlier on the Porter's Tailgate Show, was able to catch up with the head coach of the Riverton Lady Wolverines, Mike Bosner. Here's how that conversation would go. Back on the Porter's Tailgate Show, joined by Lady Wolverine head coach Mike Bosner. Coach, tough one last night, uh, ran up against a Natrona team that was just on fire, but I thought there were a lot of positives you could take away from your team, especially offensively last night. Yeah, I was tell you, I, I was so proud of We Too. I know that that's something that's been riding on her since we first started. I mean, she wanted this senior year to be a year that she could be you know, proud of, and she put so much pressure on herself, and finally last night I told her before she went out I was like look you have got to settle down and just go play We Too basketball and if you do that things will happen for you and you know what she did and 
gosh darn it, when she snuck, got on fire, she got after it. Rebounding, passing, shooting, I mean, she got it all. Was that a confidence builder, you think, for her that we'll continue to see that trajectory as the season goes on? Yeah, she understands now the level that she needs to play at to continue that. So I think you're going to see her continue that. Yep. I, and I don't want to single out uh, your other contributor, Paisley Jackson, who had a phenomenal game too, but does that take some of the pressure off of Paisley maybe to be that leading scorer and maybe get her some more open looks down the road? Yeah, you know what? I And it, this is the thing that we've been working on. I keep telling them that if we, have a, if we develop a really solid inside game, that outside game will, will, will shine and, and they'll have way more looks if we feed inside and, and work our way out. So, look, this is a uh, – we're, we're still learning. Um, I am, I'm – proud of them but yet gosh dang it i'm not a, i hate losing ah dang it I, we have a good team and they're starting to believe now they believe that hey you know what if we play at this level we can compete and and they played that level against rollins down in in uh in green river and they played pretty well last night they see where they need to be and we're continuing to grow on it Cheyenne South essentially gets a home game here on their home court tonight. Should be a spirited atmosphere. It usually is in this gym. Uh, what do you know about the Lady Bison? Yeah, you know what? I think they'll come out in the 2-3 zone. Um, I don't think they can guard us man-to-man. I think it would be really detrimental if they do that because uh, the way we push the floor i don't think they're going to be able to run and do that uh, we've got to run our offense tonight we have two zone offenses and we're going to bounce back and forth between them but our transition game we've, we've got a great transition offense and we didn't even get into a one time last night so you're going to see us really work that a little bit more we're going to get after them defensively we know who their shooters are uh, i think we'll be okay I know this is year one for you in the program, but you've been around basketball for a long time. I'm curious what you think of the new free throw rule, if you like the free throw rule or dislike it. Uh, it's early. I I think it keeps the game moving. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of on the fence with it right now. I, I don't know if... I can't say that it really helps us, but then I can't say that it hurts us either. So, yeah. Do you get to do anything fun while you're down here in Cheyenne? Any team bonding activities or just a whole lot of gym time? You know, we get a lot of gym time. And that's that's unfortunate at times, too, because my varsity has to sit way too long. Um, and so I keep telling them, you know, find a place in the bleachers and stretch out and lay down. And um, it's hard to sit for, you know, six, eight hours and then put your shoes on and go play a basketball game. So, you know, everybody's got to do it. Um, I'm one of those guys that's really cautious of that. And if it was up to me, I'd let him stay in the room and sleep and, and hang out. But it's kind of hard to run buses like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach, best of luck. We uh, appreciate your time as always. Yeah, thank you. He's Mike Bosner, the head coach of the Riverton Lady Wolverines. Always appreciate him joining us. Uh, we tried to get him on yesterday at the end of the game. Unfortunately, we had to decline him coming up. He did offer while we were doing the boys game. I do have uh, Coach Bosner and uh, what will be our Tyler Watson State Farm player of the game coming up at halftime of the boys game, though. So for you uh, Lady Wolverine fans, check back in at the boys halftime where we'll try to uh, interview our player of the game and get some more thoughts from Coach Bose. Again, Riverton and Cheyenne South. Ladies basketball coming up in three minutes. Riverton looking for their third win on the season. Cheyenne South trying to get to 500 on the early part of the schedule. This is the James Johnson Winter Classic from the Capital City. We'll take one more time out. When we return in 60 quick seconds, we're ready for tip-off. You are listening to the Lady Wolverines on 105.1 Jack FM and watching along on County10.com's YouTube channel. Did you see Allison at lunch today? I'm gonna text her. I'm gonna text Allison. Hey, hold up, Matt's calling me. Matt's calling me. Hey, we got, hey, we got the food and we're on our way right now. <laughs> hey, who's coming, bro? <laughs> Thank you. 
At Eyes on Fremont, we know that good vision is about more than just seeing clearly. That's why we're dedicated to providing expert eye care for the whole family. From children's exams to contacts, LASIK to glaucoma treatment, we're here to help. We accept most insurance plans and our experienced team will make sure you feel right at home. Schedule an appointment today at 111 South Broadway in Riverton or give us a call at 307-856-9000. Visit wyomingeyes.net to learn more. Your home for RHS basketball all season long. 1051 Jack FM. Cheyenne South High School on an overcast, windy, blustery day here in southeast Wyoming. As I got to the gym, at least there hadn't been any precipitation yet, but they said maybe some snow flurries overnight, although it doesn't sound like a lot of accumulation, but a chilly, windy day here in Cheyenne. We're set for back-to-back -back Riverton and Cheyenne South games. Boys coming up here in about an hour and a half, but the ladies uh, will be up here first. Again, Riverton Lady Wolverines coached by Mike Bosner in his first year. Lady Wolverines will start like this. We'll see if we get a national anthem here. If we do, we're going to step aside again and try our best not to talk over that. I think teams are lining up for a national anthem so i'll get you the starting lineups in just a quick moment first we're going to pause for the national anthem back with lady wolverine basketball on jack fm and county10.com to explore Wyoming's stunning parks at Fremont Motors during the Open Road Sales Event. We're giving away a complimentary Wyoming State Parks Pass with every vehicle sold so you can get out and explore our beautiful state behind the wheel of a brand new vehicle. Plus, all Fremont vehicles come back by Fremont Care so you'll be covered no matter what the open road has in store. Visit Fremont Chevrolet GMC in Riverton or shop online anytime at FremontMotors.com and start your Wyoming adventure today. Perfect Power is a proud supporter of athletics and student-athletes all across Fremont County. Perfect Power provides services for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. Darren Hubble, owner and master electrician, has over 30 years of electrical experience. Darren's trustworthy team of professionals can get the job done right. Perfect Power, serving Fremont County and surrounding areas. Stop into 1320 West Main Street, Lander, or give them a call at 307-332-7184. Star-Spangled Banner is performed by the Cheyenne South High School Marching Band. Lady Wolverines will be the designated visitors. They come out looking like this tonight under first-year head coach Mike Bosner. Or Mike Bosner, I apologize. Number one is a sophomore. She's Taylin Leesburg. Leesburg averaging six points per ball game. Number two is the team's leader on defense. She's a senior, Savannah Morton. Number 11 is We Too Cloud Horse. Cloud Horse, a senior averaging just over five points per game. That was before last night, though, where she scored 22 points and uh, just went off offensively. Would love to see that again from We Too. Haley Ingstrom, Coach Bosner calls her the Bulldog. She leads this team in rebounds with eight per game. Ingstrom wears number 13. She's a senior. And number 21 is Paisley Jackson. Jackson, the senior leading score on this team, averaging 15 points per game. Cheyenne South comes out like this. Number two is Lawson Quist. Quist, a junior. Number five is Jordan Brennan. Brennan, a senior. Number 12 is Carly Wiedemeyer. Wiedemeyer, a senior. Kaylin Van Tassel wears number 13. She's a senior. And Tess Montgomery is number 20. Montgomery is a junior. Double check here as Cheyenne South gets introduced to the crowd. Uh, the uh, coach, Brody Epler, in his third year did tell me that they've gone through three or four different variations of the starting lineup. This, these were his starters last night, and it looks like they will carry over today, too. So it's Quist, Brennan, Wiedemeyer, Van Tassel, and Montgomery that get the start for the Cheyenne South ladies. Leesburg, Morton, Cloud Horse, Ingstrom, and Jackson for the Lady Wolverines. So glad you're with us on County 10's YouTube channel. 
if you want to utilize that chat section. Always love hearing from you. Drop us a comment. Let us know where you're tuned in from tonight. And we'll give you some shout-outs. Feel free to interact. Feel free to make fun of the play-by-play -play guy. That's what I always encourage. Cheyenne South in their home. White uniforms trimmed in black and gold. South written across the front. Riverton in their away. Black uniforms. Riverton in white lettering. White numerals. And we are just about ready to go. Get a pair of 11s in the jump center circle. Actually, just one 11 now as they change. It's Tess Montgomery and We Too Cloud Horse in the jump center circle. We are underway from Cheyenne South. We Too on the jump, but it comes away to a Cheyenne South player. Jordan Brennan will control it first for the Lady Bison. Again, South has gone 1-44 and 44 over the last two seasons. They have started this year 3-4. and four. So already tripling the output of the last two years. Knocked away out of bounds, stays South basketball. Thanks again to Porter Supply Company. Our pregame sponsor will get that scoreboard on your screen here momentarily as first bucket is up and good for Cheyenne South and a quick steal. South looking for more. It was Jordan Brennan that got the first points. Quick steal by Lawson Quist. Take it away. Her shot was no good. And it's ball out of bounds to Riverton. Fremont Chevrolet providing your scoreboard update now that we've got it officially on your screen there on our YouTube channel. There's Paisley Jackson across the time stripe for the Lady Wolverines. I think this may be the first time we've seen the black uniforms this year for Riverton. I don't know if we've had a visiting uh, designation on the scoreboard. Three is no good, and rebound comes down to Wiedemeyer. Give it up to Van Tassel, and she'll take it across the time stripe. Now reload to the point guard, loss and Quist. Quist, the junior, worked on defensively by Paisley Jackson. She'll go to Montgomery, high up top. She's got Weed 2 Cloud Horse opposite her. Played a minute, 12 seconds here. Feed the paints, and a foul before the shot. Shot went up and in for South, but the foul was well before. And... The first personal on Savannah Morton. Thank goodness they're putting him on the scoreboard because we are opposite the officials. There's a five-second violation? No. Official put five seconds up like he was going to call that, but then points to the score desk like he just needed an official timeout. So it'll go right back to south. They'll lob it in. Montgomery out of her hands, and we two Cloud Horse will gather it in, lead it up ahead to Paisley Jackson. Jackson met defensively by Quist. She'll go left side outside to Morton. Snap a pass in the paint to Ingstrom. It's knocked away out of bounds. Stays Riverton basketball. Quick hands of Lawson Quist. Not sure if I finished my thought, but we are opposite the scorer table, so the officials bringing in foul calls will be with their back to me, so I'll be even more hesitant on most of those than I normally am, which usually it takes me a minute to figure those kind of things out anyhow. Here's Haley Engstrom at the top, right side outside Savannah Morton. And a reload now to Leesburg. Morton feed the paint to Engstrom. Good look inside, but she couldn't get it to go. Too strong. Riverton still looking for their first points. Here's a steal by Leesburg. Take it right back. Leesburg one on one to the rim. Off glass, can't get it to go. She'll fight for her own rebound, but it's knocked away to Van Tassel, who clears it away for South. Van Tassel dangerously weaving through traffic. She'll get knocked to the floor. And are we going to get a traveling violation? We finally do. Coach Bosner has his hands up in the air, wanted maybe a foul call before the traveling violation. Are they going to call traveling on Riverton? Everybody's hanging out on the south end like it's their basketball, and they are. That's what Coach Bosner, I think, is worried about, and... He got an explanation from the official and seemed to nod his head in agreement. So I thought the South player had more control of it than Riverton, but that's why I am up here. Love our officials all across Wyoming, by the way. They do a great job, and anything that confuses me is usually my fault, not the officiating. Quist. Left side, three is put up and missed off the backboard by Brennan. Fight for the rebound. Morton 
will dig it off the floor and hand it to Leesburg. Now to Paisley Jackson across the time stripe. Jackson snap a pass down low to Ingstrom. Double teamed and rejected, but she is fouled. Amaya Smith, I think, gets the personal. She just checked in. And that will be the first on Amaya. Jason Peterson, our uh, Eagle Eye producer, telling me that they have well, the Riverton ladies have worn their black uniforms once this season. This will be the second time. First free throw by Haley Engstrom was no good. That's the second one fly and knocks it down. So Lady Wolverines on the scoreboard. 5.25 to play first quarter. It's 2-1 to one Cheyenne South in the early going. Montgomery down low. Tough shot. Never really got a handle on it. And it planks off the side of the backboard. Gathered in by Jackson. Lady Wolverines on the run. Leesburg. Circle it around up top. Now right side around the perimeter. She goes to Savannah Morton. Morton on the dribble, and she double dribbled. Lost the handle, maybe put the other hand on top of the basketball and came down with it again. Uncharacteristic for Savannah. She takes very good care of the basketball. Is one of the leading defenders on the team, too. Just plays really sticky, aggressive defense and does a lot of the little intangible things that sometimes go unrecognized, but as a basketball fan, you just love those kind of things. Here's Quist at the top, Lawson directing traffic. Right side, outside, they go now to Brennan. And here's Montgomery, holds it opposite We Too Cloud Horse. 440, clock continues to tick. Long two missed by Van Tassel and a Riverton foul on the rebound. That will be the first personal for Weed 2 Cloud Horse, second team foul in the act of shooting. And Montgomery is going to go to the line for two free throws. Tess, the junior, first one is too strong, no good. So. Cold shooting here by both teams in the first three and a half minutes. Still very early from Cheyenne South High School. Montgomery second is nothing but net good. And South now has a three to one advantage. That'll let them establish moderate full court pressure, which Leesburg breaks nicely and now throws it into a defender who knocks it out of bounds. Into Jonathan Wakeland, by the way, former Shoshone High School coach who is now part of the Cheyenne South coaching staff. Left side, outside, Savannah Morton. Stirs into that 2-3 zone. Coach Bosner mentioned it on the Porter's Tailgate Show that he expects 2-3 zone all night from South, and that's what we're getting so far. Up top is Savannah Morton. Snap it to Leesburg on a bounce pass. Almost poked away, but Taylor will gather it in. Cloud Horse has her shot partially rejected, and it's ripped out of there by Smith. Here comes Amaya, two on one. Nice bounce pass. Cloud Horse picks up her second personal. Smith bounce passed it to Jordan Brennan, who went up strong. Cloud Horse trying to race from behind the play and gave up her second personal. And that's tough when uh, you consider... The confidence boost that we two got seemingly yesterday. She scored 22 points, had an outstanding first half, and now some early foul trouble for her. Brennan's first free throw is good. And a couple of new Lady Bison will check in. A couple of new Lady Wolverines too. Cammie Paskett and Tatum Tyra. Check in, Brennan knocks them both in. Lady Bison up five to one here early on. 3.50 to play, first quarter action. Jared Anderson and Jason Peterson with you from South. Here's Tatum Tyra, who's slapped and fouled on the left side block. She gets to go to the line. Tatum has done a really nice job for Riverton off the bench. I feel like I say that just about once a game. That was the first foul on Tess Montgomery. Tatum, just a sophomore, 
has some height already and you think if she continues to grow and keeps working hard like she is she's going to be a force for the Lady Wolverines here down the stretch and in the next couple of years first free throw too strong no good so Riverton still working to get their second point of the game Tyra lets it fly and swishes that one. Five to two, Riverton trailing south here. First quarter action. 3.38 to play now. Here's Montgomery all alone in the paint. High arcing shot is not going to go, though. Hit the front of the rim, and it's rebounded out by Pasket. Here comes Cammy. Pasket and Tyra were the first substitutions. We saw Cammy come in first last night for the Lady Wolverines, kind of in that sixth person position. Paisley Jackson, long two in the corner is no good. And out of bounds off of the hands of Van Tassel as it squirts away from her. Stays Lady Wolverine ball, and it'll be Leesburg to throw it in under and to the right of the Riverton basket with the South cheerleaders directly behind her. Give it to Ingstrom in the corner. She'll feed the paint to Tyra off of her hands and out of bounds. Well, Coach Bosner told us yesterday that he wants this team to feed the paint at least 15 times per game, and it hasn't translated into any points. Both Riverton points coming off of free throws so far, but they are working it towards the post. Out of bounds on the dribble drive is Van Tassel. Good defense applied by uh, Ingstrom and by Cammy Paskett. Double team to rid backcourt. And I think Van Tassel just kind of got that in a spot that wasn't good for her. She tiptoed along the end line and stepped out of bounds. Leesburg stares into the 2-3 zone. Again, Riverton looking for their first field goal of the game. Five minutes in now, 5-2. to two. Cheyenne South, the lead on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. Paisley Jackson going to get called for a five count. Outstanding defense by Lawson Quist. All over her wouldn't uh, give up on Paisley. And the junior Lawson Quist with a good start for the Lady Bison. Van Tassel, pass it over the time stripe to Smith. Amaya Crossover dribble and now reload way up top to Quist. Lawson put it on the floor, directing traffic. Go left side to Brennan. Brennan stares at a cutter down low. Now she'll wing it around the perimeter to Smith. Amaya slices through traffic. Can't get a shot to go, but she draws contact. Another Lady Wolverine foul and Amaya Smith off a nice dribble drive. will head to the line. That's going to be the first personal on Paisley Jackson. And the third, no, the fourth Riverton team foul. Amaya to the line. Studies her shot. First one goes in and out, stays out. The senior goes back up there. And they got the Giannis Antetokounmpo style long free throw routine. She will hit the second one. They get six to two, a Lady Bison. 2.25 to play first quarter. There's Paskett, tried to scoop up a shot in the lane, couldn't get it to go, but she slapped on the wrist. And Cami Paskett now heads to the stripe. That was the fourth team foul on Cheyenne South. And the first on Wiedemeyer. So Carly picks up the personal, sending junior Cammy Paskett to the line. First to two is good for Cammy. All Riverton points coming off of free throws so far. Second one in and out, no good. Paskett before that had shot just nine free throws on the season. Here's Smith. Now Quist who travels with it. I thought maybe they were going to call a travel before on Smith. She reloaded to Lawson Quist who definitely traveled with it and they whistled a violation that time. Timeout asked for by Coach Bosner. 
That is the first time out of the ball game. And we'll see if it's a full. No, it's just a 30, so we'll keep it right here. Lady Wolverines trailing Cheyenne South here early on, 6-3. to three. Some cold shooting really on both ends. And Riverton's three points thus far coming off of free throws by three different contributors. Cami Paskett, Haley Ingstrom, and Tatum Tyra all have a free throw. Jordan Brennan, the leading scorer for Cheyenne South. She's got four points, one point apiece for Amaya Smith, and one point for Tess Montgomery. Cheyenne South has just one field goal, too. Four of their six points coming at the free throw line. So it's been a bit of a free throw fest. Riverton boys coming up later on tonight. It was supposed to be a 7.30 start time. That game is not going to start until at least 8 o'clock if you're looking for boys basketball here. That'll be on the County 10 YouTube channel where you can always watch streaming video of Lady Wolverine and Wolverine basketball all year long. There's Paisley Jackson out of the timeout, defended by Wiedemeyer. 2-3 zone, but traps all over, wreaking a little bit of havoc on Riverton defensively, but slowly, methodically, they'll feed Ingstrom in the paint. She gets it poked and taken away, though, and here comes South on the run. Van Tassel with a left side layup. That's no good. Hard off the backboard, kept alive by Smith. Out to Quiss now for three. That's no good, too strong. And Engstrom will gather in a rebound. She's quickly tied up in backcourt, though. Possession arrow will keep it with Riverton. Give credit to South for some hustle there. Forcing the tie-up. Carlina Ward, a senior, returns. And Amaya Smith, another senior, checks out. I thought Amaya had some really good hustle minutes there off the bench. Down low, Tatum Tyra is tied up, so we're going to trade possession arrows. Two tie-ups in a row when this one favors Cheyenne South. Riverton this time will slap on some full-court pressure as Savannah Morton will return. Taylor Leesburg comes out with... High fives all around. Jessalyn Meeks, Mike Bradley, assistant coaches there to meet her first. Ward to Brennan, and now Quist has it right side near the top. Back up top, they reload to Quist, and a foul away from the basketball going to be against Cheyenne South. Looks like a moving screen down low. And I missed who it's on. It's on Jordan Brennan, her first. That is team foul number five. Player control foul will not result in any free throws, but Riverton will take the ball back. Nine total points, and seven of them have come off of free throws here in the first quarter. There's Tatum Tyra down low. Tyra had trouble gathering it in. Now finally we will get the handle on it. Scoop it to Ingstrom. Shot no good. Tyra tries it again. That's no good. Now they crash to the floor. And our third tie-up in the last 60 seconds of play will send it back to the Lady Wolverines. Riverton fell to Natrona last night, 82-63. They've got one more game here from the James Johnson Winter Classic tomorrow at 1 o'clock from Laramie High School taking on the Lady Plainsmen. Get you some other scores from this tournament and around Fremont County basketball as time allows us to on the broadcast tonight. Tyra is tied up. I missed the call. Another possession arrow situation will send it to Cheyenne South. Lady Wolverines slapping that pressure on. It's going to be handled nicely, though, as Smith will race it into the front court. 36 seconds to play in the first quarter. South looking for more points. They lead by three. Ingstrom defends Smith. Riverton in his zone defense of their own. 2-3. Here's Brennan spot up for three. That's no good. And a rebound by Ingstrom. 
Riverton will muscle it away with 10 seconds to play in the quarter. Haley Ingstrom across the time stripe. Five seconds now. She'll hand it to Morton. Does Morton see the time? Maybe now they do. Paskett won't get a shot off. And at the end of the first quarter, it's Cheyenne South 6. The Lady Wolverines 3. Let's step aside for a quick timeout. We'll bring you quarter number two after this. You are listening to the Lady Wolverines on 105.1 Jack FM and watching live streaming video on County 10's YouTube channel. County 10 is your Fremont County news leader. We're everywhere, on the web, mobile, social, and on your radio dial, with all the news you need to feel connected. From sports to board meetings and community features, we work hard to bring you all the latest updates you care about. Visit us today at county10.com. County 10. Community. Connected. Make your home improvement projects a breeze with Sutherland's, your home improvement experts. Always the right products at the right price for every project, every day. You can shop and pay online at Sutherland's.com and we'll get it ready for easy in-store pickup. With the tools and the know-how, you can count on Sutherland's for any job. With over 30,000 items in stock, make your first stop at Sutherland's Home Improvement in Casper and Riverton. Back to the ball game. Here's the voice of Riverton Sports, Jared Anderson. Cheyenne South is the location to the South basketball here as we start quarter at number two on that Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. It is Lady Bison at six, Lady Wolverines three. Nine total points in the first quarter. Seven of them were on free throws. The only field goal was Jordan Brennan's for South. Lady Bison basketball as entry pass to the paint is tipped and taken away by Taylor Leesburg. So no shot on the first possession for South. And here comes Riverton. Savannah Morton will keep it on the dribble. Savannah stares into the 2-3 zone. Again, we anticipate seeing that most of the night from the Lady Bison. Shot by Jackson is no good. Paisley Gets decked to the floor again. Ball out of bounds off of a South defender and goes back to Riverton. Jackson makes so many hustle plays that I kind of almost giggle that she's on the floor again. Here's Morton. Stop at the free throw line. Look for Leesburg. Leesburg, mid-range two that just cannot get over the rim. Fight for the rebound comes away to Montgomery, who scoops it to Quist. And now Lawson is on the run. Lawson Quist jump stop and will throw it in traffic, taken away by Paisley Jackson. Ragged pace for both teams through the first nine minutes. Several turnovers on both sides. Shot by Ingstrom is no good. Rebound taken away by Jordan Brennan. Done a lot of basketball games. I don't know if we uh, have gone this far with just one field goal in a long time, at least, for a game I've done. Carlina Ward returns for the South lineup. Both of these teams played last night, had most of the day for South. Having the home game, went to school today. Quist shot right side is no good, and Leesburg will tiptoe the baseline. She's double teamed, could use some help here, and there's a tie-up finally, as that uh, will favor possession arrow Riverton. Six thirty-two to play, second quarter, six to three, South. Haven't seen a point for quite a while for either team. South full court pressure again. Leesburg dribbles in traffic. Ball on the floor. Pinballs around. Bodies all over midcourt. And now a timeout by Coach Brody Epler, who heads up as soon as his player got possession. Coach Epler said, give me a quick 30-second timeout. And that's exactly what the official granted him. Give a big shout out to our friends at Sutherland's in Riverton. Sutherland's has what you need for every project. They're located at North Federal Boulevard. Good luck to all of our Fremont County athletes from Sutherland's. 
And thank you to Wyoming 4x4, wishing all of our athletes good luck. They're located north of Riverton, your one-stop shop for all your vehicle upgrade needs. Lifts, bumpers, bed liners, give Wyoming 4x4 a call today. Appreciate all the folks that sponsor these broadcasts, allow us to travel with the teams. Of course, Wyatt Marichka bringing you more Fremont County basketball coverage right now on our YouTube channel as Lander Boys are at a tournament in Pinedale. Six eighteen remaining second quarter, still 6-3. Lady Bison on top. Jordan Brennan has those four points. Riverton's got three free throws from three different ladies. Cammie Paskett, Haley Ingstrom, and Tatum Tyra. Real easy stat keeping through the first 10 minutes of the ball game. Knocked out of bounds, Haley Ingstrom with the quick play into Coach Bosner. Coach Bosner in his first year with the Lady Wolverine program had some collegiate basketball experience, played at Utah, then transferred to the University of Hawaii, which not a bad gig. Play some hoops in the Hawaiian Islands. I'm hoping that uh, Reggie Miller and Riverton High School Athletics could schedule a tournament in Hawaii. I'd take, especially January, I'd take a, a trip to cover them in Honolulu. There's Quist. Feed the paint to Peterson, turnaround shot for two. That's no good, and rebounded out by Timbry Mathil, who just checked in that last dead ball. Good position, good uh, effort there from Timbry. And she draws the Cheyenne South foul. That is the second personal on Montgomery. First team foul of the second quarter on the Lady Bison. Asked Coach Bosner about the new free throw rules this year and says it's too early to tell. He says basically pace of play he thought had improved a little bit but didn't know how it's going to turn out in the long term. So far from my perspective I've really enjoyed the pace of play with these new free throw rules. Here's Savannah Morton left side outside. Morton on the dribble way up top near the Bison logo at midcourt. Back to Morton now on the right side. Has Quist on her defensively. High post they go to Mathil. Mathil lose the handle, was well defended. And now Timbrey will get charged with the foul in backcourt. For first, team foul number one on Riverton of the half. We are still at 6-3, 5.24 to play second quarter. Lived in Cheyenne for a few years and was able to cover some games here at Cheyenne South. Just a great atmosphere and it hasn't worn off. The new school, I think, created a lot of buzz and energy first with their student sections and they continue to be a spirited bunch here from South. There's Quist at the top. Morton on her defensively. We've played three minutes this quarter. Good feed to Brennan off last two. Good. Jordan Brennan has her second bucket of the game. She's got six total. And now quickly, Mathil goes up strong, but is fouled by Amaya Smith. Amaya didn't like it, but hit her with the body. And... Timbry Mathil, a sophomore, will step to the line for the Lady Wolverines. Timbry has only shot six times this season, but she's hit five of them. Boisterous crowd. First one is left short for Mathil. And Timbry has an opportunity here to tie the... Uh, Leading scorer on the Lady Wolverines. Three ladies with one apiece so far. That's the second one fly. That bounces around, stays out. Kept alive by Ingstrom. Put back is no good and then ripped away by Jordan Brennan. Brennan wildly throws it down court and it'll be gathered in by Morton. Morton to Paisley Jackson. Spot up, can't get it to go. Haley Ingstrom, another offensive rebound. Boy, Haley doing a great job on the offensive glass. 
Here's a bank long two good from Savannah Morton. And that's the first field goal of the game for the Lady Wolverines. They now trail by three with 420 remaining second quarter. Knocked out of bounds at midcourt. Stays south basketball. Tatum Tyra checks back into the Riverton rotation. Feel free to drop us a comment in the chat box as getting free behind the play there is Jordan Brennan. Jordan now quickly with eight of South's ten points. Feel free to contribute or send your well wishes to these Lady Wolverines there. Love interacting with you. Bounce pass from Tatum. Tyra in traffic is taken away. And here comes South on the run again. Newly into the game. Morales will try a three. That's Maddie Morales who left her three short. And Leesburg will rip it away. Here comes Tay Lynn. Spot up. Now go to Tyra down low. Tyra, I think, traveled. She did. Ten to five. South out in front of the Lady Wolverines, 3.43 to play second quarter. Bounce pass in backcourt to Quist. Quist is sounded by a few Lady Wolverines, and now we'll get it across to Wiedemeyer. Reload to Lawson. Lawson's done a good job at that point guard position handling the basketball. As Morton on her defensively, number two versus number two. Now feed Brennan down low. Turnaround shot for two is no good. Partially blocked. And Timbery Mathil doing some work down low. Able to gather it in. Right side, outside they go to Paisley. Jackson deed up by Van Tassel. Had her all over her. Some contact. There's Morton. Now Jackson, a long, high-arcing three, will not drop. A rebound, Tara, tracked down by Wiedemeyer, and here comes South on the run again. Brennan will gather it. Mid-range two is no good. Hard off the back of the iron and gathered by uh, Tatum Tyra. Nope, Haley Engstrom on the rebound. Morton. Right side around the perimeter, which it watches a cut. Now we'll find Leesburg open for three. Can't get it to go. And a rebound tracked down by Morales. Ball on the floor temporarily gathered in by Quist. And South will reset up their offense. So cold shooting continues both directions. 2.17 to play second quarter. 10-5 to five. Cheyenne South. One of the lowest scoring first halves I think we've had in the state this year so far. See if they can catch fire here the next two minutes of the second quarter. Brennan pick up her dribble, and now she'll go to Wiedemeyer. Back to Brennan. Brennan's got a game-high eight points has been the majority of the offense for everybody, really. Eight of ten south points. Jordan surveys the floor now finds Wiedemeyer up top south taking a lot of time off of the clock now down to 135 to play in the half entry pass was almost taken away by Leesburg now gathered in by Brennan compose herself two is good Jordan Brennan has 10 points in a 12 to 5 game it's hard to believe somebody's in double figures but Jordan Brennan is there's Jackson from the corner too that's gonna drop for Paisley Jackson her first bucket of the game Make it 12 to 7. Quist will walk it up the floor. The junior will use a screen. Now points to Brennan. Dangerous pass is gathered in by Jordan. Jordan put a move on down low. Can't get it to drop, though. Hard off the back of the rim. And Ingstrom, another rebound. Ingstrom averages nearly eight rebounds a game. And by my count, she's got at least four or five at this point unofficially cleaning up there and a couple of those were big offensive rebounds entry pass intended for Mathil is poked away but she is fouled by Brennan that's the second personal for Jordan and the third team foul for Cheyenne South ball out of bounds to the Lady Wolverines. 
It'll be soccer star Savannah Morton to inbound for Riverton. Lob up top to Tyra. Now she tried to get it back to Morton, but her pass is intercepted, taken away. Nice play by Ward. Up ahead to Quist. She's blocked by Tyra. Tatum, Tyra, take it away. Now Quist take it right back, and Quist is fouled. That effort gets the Cheyenne South fans standing and applauding. Tyra picks up the personal. Her first. Ball out of bounds to South with 18 seconds to play in the half. Got the buckle up for life Wyoming halftime show presented by Wydot on deck for you. Entry pass comes to Ward. 15 seconds now, South. Stares at the clock, now will back it way off. Van Tassel has it in her hand, right hand dribble, get past Paisley Jackson. And off of the hands of Wiedemeyer, it'll go back to Riverton with 3.9 seconds and the length of the floor to bring it. South will put some pressure on in backcourt. There's Mathil. Press breaker is on. Mathil's pass is going to go into the score table, out of bounds. So with 1.5 on the clock, turnover to Cheyenne South. It'll be Kaylin Van Tassel to trigger it in right near midcourt. She'll lob it all the way to the paint, and it's going to go out of bounds untouched, or was it touched? They'll say it was tipped at the baseline, and now there's just .4 seconds left in the half. Last 3.9 have taken a long time. We've traded the ball back and forth a few times, and now .4 seconds, length of the floor to go. Coach Bosner, I think, might be asking about the clock. Jackson's going to heave it three-quarter court plus, and it doesn't come close. At the intermission, it's Cheyenne South 12, Riverton 7, and we'll head into the locker room and a very low-scoring affair here from Cheyenne South High School. Brody Epler's team up by five points. I think if you're Coach Epler or Coach Bosner, you're not thrilled with the productivity there in the first half. A lot of missed shots, but hard-fought ball game and uh, players scrappy getting after it on the floor. There's no real lack of energy. It's just shots aren't necessarily dropping and uh, feels like I've used the term ragged a lot, but ragged pace of play here from Cheyenne South High School. Again, it's 12 to seven at the intermission. We'll run down, uh, won't take long, the first half scoring summary. And we'll do that in just a moment on the Buckle Up for Life Wyoming halftime show. Again at the break, it's South 12, Riverton 7. We are back in a minute. You're listening to the Lady Wolverines on 105.1 Jack FM and watching video coverage on County 10's YouTube channel. Three letters. Five letters. Just think about what am I doing right now? Smile. <laughs> Smile? Uh-huh. This is so easy. <laughs> Nobody likes to be stopped by the police, but if I'd seen her texting while driving and given her a ticket, it just might have saved her life. This is Maven, award-winning optics for the adventurers. From binoculars to spotting scopes, Maven has you covered. Be prepared for scouting, wildlife watching, or any outdoor adventure. As a proud sponsor of local high school sports, we wish all the Fremont County athletes the best of luck this season. Visit mavenbuilt.com for more information and to order. Maven, discover something new.
tires, tires, and more tires. Bailey Tire and Auto Service offers a huge selection, great prices, and fantastic service. Oh, yeah. Hi, this is Haley. With over 13,000 tires to choose, Bailey has tires for your ATV, farm implement, car, truck, trailer, semi, lawnmower, wheelbarrow, you name it. If it has a tire, Bailey Tire and Auto Service can fix it or replace it. Bailey Tire and Auto Service is your one-stop, complete tire and service shop. Just remember, with Bailey's, there's no tricks, just tires. Central Bank and Trust is a local bank that is focused on technology and convenience. We have a simpler online mortgage application process. You can use your computer or mobile device to upload required documents and sign them online. We have a variety of personal and business banking services. Stop in or visit centralbanktrust.com. We live here. We work here. Watch every RHS basketball game all season long on the County 10 YouTube page. Welcome you into the Buckle Up for Life Wyoming halftime show. A defensive affair here. Cold shooting and not a lot of points to speak of at the intermission. Cheyenne South on top of the Lady Wolverines 12 to 7. Thanks to the Wyoming Department of Transportation reminding you to buckle up every trip, every time. It is a simple message. Seat belts save lives. Buckle up every time you get into a vehicle in the states of Wyoming. And uh, it takes you a second. Could save your life. Let's take a look at first half scoring numbers in this one. We'll start for the Lady Wolverines with those seven points. Savannah Morton and Paisley Jackson tied for a team high two points both with a field goal. One point apiece for Cammie Paskett, Haley Ingstrom and Tatum Tyra so I don't uh, I don't mean to sound cynical here in a 12 to 7 game but a pretty balanced effort when uh, you consider they've only scored seven points. There are five different uh, Lady Wolverines who have scored so far in this one. Uh, the Cheyenne South offense has been all Jordan Brennan. She has 10 of the 12 Lady Bison points. One point apiece for Amaya Smith and Tess Montgomery. So Jordan Brennan in double digits. And right now she's outscoring the Lady Wolverines 10 to 7. Had a couple more free throws in the South. Up by five points. They led 6 to 3 after the first quarter. I told you the uh, scoring summary wasn't going to take very long there and it will not. These Lady Wolverines are back at it tomorrow taking on the Laramie Lady Plains Minute. That'll be a 1 o'clock tip off from Laramie High School. We'll have that of course for you here on 105.1 Jack FM and County 10's YouTube channel as well. Taking a look at some other girls basketball scores from the James Johnson Winter Showcase in Cheyenne from today. It was 3A Wheatland knocking off 4A Green River 51 to 42. How about uh, 3A Douglas? Everybody in the state I think knows to fear Douglas when they see them on the schedule but uh, in a battle of number ones it was number one 3A Douglas all over number one 4A Cheyenne East 57 to 33. I know there are some other good 4A teams and uh, some, some good teams Douglas will face in 3A and maybe even a team or two in 2A that you'd bring into the conversation but I think that score alone proves that Douglas may single-handedly be the best girls basketball team in the state. 57 to 33 over 4A's number one team. Rock Springs beat uh, Natrona County's Phillies 59 to 36. So I think a little disheartening there after you see an 82 point effort by Natrona's Phillies last night for the Lady Wolverines. Natrona held it just 36 against Rock Springs today. Sheridan defeated Kelly Walsh in girls basketball is 44 to 40 right now at East. Green River's playing the Lady T-Birds uh, in Laramie. Actually, at Story Gym, Laramie is playing Rock Springs. Evanston playing at Cheyenne Central later this evening. So that's what we've got for you again. Uh, Wyatt barichka has got Lander basketball going on right now. Lander boys are taking on uh, Worland, I believe. Let me pull that up for you. They're taking on Worland and I'm 
trying my very best to uh, get you an update. Wyatt did tell me that former Wyoming Cowgirl head coach Gerald Mattinson is in attendance at Pinedale High School. Don't have a score yet, but I know you can go watch that right now on County 10's YouTube channel if you're interested in more Fremont County basketball. Again, at the intermission here at Cheyenne South 12, Riverton 7. We will take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll get you set for the second half of action. You are tuned in to Lady Wolverine basketball on your radio home for RHS Sports 105.1 Jack FM and watching video on County 10's YouTube channel. Looking for an upgrade to your vehicle, Wyoming 4x4 is the place to go for all your upgrade needs. From lift kits to bumpers, grill guards to bed liners, we've got everything you need to take your ride to the next level. We use top brands for our bumpers like Fab Fours, Ranch Hand, and Road More. So get your vehicle ready and stop at Wyoming 4x4, or give Dan a call at 307-857-3175. Wyoming Catholic College is a unique institution that offers an immersion in the Western tradition, the beauty and challenges of the wilderness, and the treasures of the Catholic spiritual heritage. Our mission is to provide a unique educational experience that nurtures the body, mind, and spirit. We are proud of our alumni success stories and the learning opportunities we offer through our academic outreach program. Come and explore our campus in Lander, Wyoming. Kane and Associates. CPAs is your go-to source for tax, financial, and business solutions. Our experienced professionals are trusted and know the numbers. We're dedicated to providing personalized attention to each of our clients. Whether you're an individual or a business, we're here to help with all your accounting needs. Let us do the math for you. Stop in or visit RivertonCPA.com to learn more. Introducing WyoGlass, your local glass experts. From windows to showers, we got you covered. We're proud to be a part of the Lander community and a local sports sponsor. We're dedicated to serving all of Fremont County, so you can trust us with your residential and commercial windows and doors, auto glass, shower doors, and garage doors. For quality service and local support, choose WyoGlass. Visit us at wyoglassoflander.com or on Main Street in Lander today. Proud to support the Wolverines and Lady Wolverines. We are County10.com. We are set for second half action thanks to Buckle Up for Life Wyoming and the Wyoming Department of Transportation making our halftime coverage possible. At Fremont Chevrolet back on your scoreboard there. We'll switch it over to the third quarter and we are just about ready to go. Same starters for Cheyenne South. It looks like it's Lauren Quist, Jordan Brennan, Carly Wiedemeyer, Kaylin Van Tassel, and Tess Montgomery. Lady Wolverines back out on the floor and they also have the same starters. Savannah Morton, Taylor Leesburg, Paisley Jackson, Haley Engstrom, and Weetu Cloud Horse back out there. Good to see Weetu back out on the floor after those two personal fouls in the first half. Hopefully uh, we'll get to see we two not get into any more foul trouble and start scoring some points like she did last night. We've switched sides. Lauren Quist has it left side outside for South in their home white uniforms. Riverton in the black away uniforms. Loose ball gathered in by Paisley Jackson, who's off to the races, almost has to, has to retreat to get it. Was poked away from her and give it away now to Engstrom in the corner. Haley tried to find Weetu along the baseline, poked and taken away. Now a fight for it along the baseline, knocked out of bounds to Cheyenne South. Give some kudos to this Cheyenne South marching band who are walking in front of your screen right now with a little third quarter break. They've been very entertaining throughout the evening and providing a good atmosphere here at South High School. Shot missed by Van Tassel. Long rebound knocked away to Quist. Lauren on the dribble drive. Leesburg on her defensively. May have switched assignments defensively. We saw Morton on her a lot 
in the first half. Now Leesburg comes out defending her, and it's off of the hands of Montgomery. Tess just couldn't quite corral it out of bounds to Riverton. We've played a minute here in the second half, still stuck at 12 to seven south. They've led throughout. Riverton with just two field goals in the first half. Jackson, skip pass for Leesburg. She'll look to the corner now to Morton, high post. They go to Engstrom, some trouble handling it. Now Engstrom gathers it in, get it to Leesburg. She'll have it knocked and taken away. Here comes Quist. Lead pass up ahead for Van Tassel. Left side, partially blocked by Engstrom, and now back up with it is Jordan Brennan, who is knocked to the floor in foul. Jordan will go to the free throw line on the Riverton first foul of the half. Going to get Savannah Morton with her second. First free throw is good by Brennan, and Jordan has the first point of the third quarter. She's got 11. Leading scorer on South, also their leading rebounder, and she is so far tonight, too. South on top by a touchdown, 14 to seven. Leesburg. Stop in the paint, pivot around, find Paisley Jackson high, arcing three is good. Paisley Jackson with the Riverton's first three-pointer of the ball game, first three for either team, and now a foul in backcourt real fast on Haley Ingstrom. Haley's first, Riverton's second team foul. Big shot from Paisley, hopefully that kind of gets the lid off here for Rivers in offensively, they trail by four, 14 to 10. Pressure set up by Riverton. They'll get it up ahead to Brennan. Jordan, spot up from three range, pulls the ball back down though, and we'll find Wiedemeyer. Wiedemeyer goes to Brennan down low where she likes it now. Put a nice move on down low. Jordan Brennan for two off the glass. South has 16, Brennan has 14 of it. Here's Cloud Horse, quick three. That will not drop. Knocked out of bounds by Paisley Jackson. Paisley tried to save it. Saved it right into an official. Lady Bison have the six point advantage. And coming out of the ball game to a nice round of applause is Kaylin Van Tassel. It was Wiedemeyer who checked back in. Actually, nope, it was Carlina Ward who checked in. Took a long time to try to study the floor to figure out who came in and still got it wrong. South basketball out of bounds. Quist under her own hoop. Tried to feed it to Brennan. Engstrom knocks it to the floor. They'll tie each other up. Are they going to whistle this? They won't. They're just going to let them play. I don't know if I've seen a held ball that long. Finally, Brennan out of the pack. Can't get it to go, but she is fouled. And two free throws coming up for Jordan Brennan. Five sixteen to play third quarter. South up by six. And the game's leading scorer goes to the line. Impressive night so far for the South senior Jordan Brennan who has 14 of their 16 points. Coach Bosner lobbying with an official. Meanwhile another official was checking something at the scorer table and now they'll give an explanation to Coach Brody Epler. First free throw for Brennan is on the way and no good. Bounced off the rim, stays out. We'll see Van Tassel and Smith return to South. Again, the Cheyenne South girls basketball program established in 2011 has never been to the state tournament. Making that a goal this year, and they've won three games so far this season. 
Second free throw is good from Brennan. Cheyenne South boys a few years ago finished runners up. They've been to the state tournament three times in the school's history. Morton with the basketball stop. Baseline drive shut off. Give it to Cloud Horse who travels with it. Just did not get the feet set. And it's been tough sledding here for the Lady Wolverines offensively all game long. We're three minutes old in the third quarter. And South leads 17 to 10. Smith lose the handle, but her teammate Ward is right there. Ward will force up a tough shot. That's no good. Volleyball match breaks out for the rebound and comes away to South. Gathering it in is Wiedemeyer. Put up the two. Got it. Carly Wiedemeyer gives South their largest lead of the ball game at 19 to 10. Leesburg. Races it across the half-court stripe. Wanted we two down low, and the pass goes out of bounds. Coach Bosner wants a timeout and continues to lobby with an official about something that happened at the other end. Coach now is being kind of pushed back by his assistant. It's a full timeout taken by the Lady Wolverines. Give us a chance to thank Northside Auto Body Shop in Lander. Northside is on 2nd Street. All your auto body needs. They are proud supporters of Fremont County Athletics. And thanks to our friends at Eyes on Fremont, your hard work is paying off. Eyes on Fremont, proud to see our Riverton Lady Wolverines compete. They also wish uh, all RHS students the best of luck in the classroom this year. Eyes on Fremont at 111 South Broadway Avenue in Riverton, your local optometrist. Check out the Student of the Week series at county10.com. All local schools have different uh, Students of the Week highlighted. Wyoming Catholic College allows us to uh, highlight a lot of those athletes, including our Riverton High School Athletes of the Week. You can get biographies on some local kiddos doing great things academically, athletically, in different clubs. It's fun to cheer on youth all across Fremont County. Give a shout out to Becky weighing in on the County 10 YouTube channel. Thank you, Becky, for tuning in and joining us this evening. We appreciate you. Feel free to drop us a comment there in that chat section. Let us know where you're watching from or just send your encouragement to these ladies here as we Continued third quarter action. 4-10 to play third quarter. South on top of Riverton, 19-10. And although Natrona got the better of Riverton pretty handily yesterday, Montgomery misses a shot. Smith gets the rebound, can't get it to go, and Engstrom is there for the rebound. Riverton shot the ball pretty well last night. They put up some big numbers. So I think frustrating for Coach Bosner and for these Lady Wolverines to see shots just not falling here at South High School. But you have those nights, and this game's still obviously well within reach. A lot to play for here. Third quarter action. Cloud Horse to the rim is swatted away. And a foul on the Lady Bison. We too is going to go to the line. I'll check the foul. That was on Amaya Smith, her third personal. That was just the first foul of the quarter on Cheyenne South High School. Thanks again to Jason Peterson, our camera operator, traveling all across the state to be with us at these broadcasts. First for We Too is good, her first point on the evening. Jason and I will make the trip over the summit to Laramie High School tomorrow and bring you back-to-back -back games at roughly 1 and 2.30. Riverton takes on Laramie for the first time this season. We two's second free throw will rattle home. She's got two, and that's going to close the deficit to within seven. Here's a traveling violation on Van Tassel. She just got caught up down low and kept sliding the pivot foot, so it's ball out of bounds to the Lady Wolverines. Coach Bosner and probably everybody back home in Riverton would love to see 
a little momentum shift here in the third quarter. See if Riverton can get something going here through the hands of Haley Ingstrom, though, and taken away by Lauren Quist. South on the run, setting up their offense. They'll stare into the Riverton defense as they dig into the 2-3 zone. Left side, outside Van Tassel off glass two. That's no good. Rebound tipped. And now a loose scramble for it, gathered in by Morton. Morton races ahead of the pack, cannot hit the fast break layup, and she'll punch the basketball away. That's occasionally a technical foul, just a frustrating play there, and now the official going to come over and talk to Coach Bosner about it. He has not signaled a call yet. He's going to go to the score table, and now she's going to tee up. Savannah Morton. Nothing egregious from Savannah at all, but you just can't punch the basketball. And understood completely, she missed the layup. To her credit, she was going about 100 miles an hour down the court. But uh, technical foul assessed to Savannah Morton is the third on her ledger, and they'll pick Jordan Brennan, who's a pretty darn good free throw shooter. She sinks the first one. Took the official a long time to get that T call in, so I wasn't sure he was going to do it. He stopped play, walked over to Coach Bosner and said a couple of words and then went to the scorer desk and finally gave the T signal. Back to a nine-point south advantage, and they'll get the ball back. <laughs> Lawson Quist hustling along a couple of Cheyenne South onlookers band member she probably goes to school with but hustling them past so she can inbound the basketball here's Brennan deed up by Cloud Horse now swing it up top to Quist Brennan has an open long two sinks it Jordan Brennan has 19 and South has a double digit lead 23 to 12 we too in the corner. She'll try a baseline drive. That's shut off. Scoop it back out to Cammy Paskett. Paskett tried to shovel a pass that is intercepted by Quist. Quist up ahead to Wiedemeyer off glass two. That's Kaylin Van Tassel. Van Tassel's got it to go. And South is feeling the momentum right now with 2.18 to play in the third quarter on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. There's a foul on Brennan. Jordan will pick up her third personal. Second team foul on South Ball out of bounds to the Lady Wolverines. 2.15 to play, third quarter. It's 25 to 12. South on top of Riverton. It was 12 to 7 South at halftime. Jordan Brennan gets a nice round of applause. Very well deserved as she comes out with three fouls and 19 points. A three in the corner, right out of the inbound is good for Paisley Jackson. Jackson's got two triples and eight points. Long pass tipped by Ingstrom, taken away by Leesburg. See if Paisley gave him a spark there and now Ingstrom with the takeaway. Right side they go. To Engstrom, nice look underneath to We Too, lay it up and in. Cloud Horse was wide open. Engstrom drew the double team. They collapsed on her. She found We Too. Haley the assist. 5 0 Lady Wolverine run. Here's Montgomery trying to end it off glass. Can't get it to go. Went around the rim and out. Long baseball pass for Paisley. Can't get it, but she's not to the floor and fouled. Helped up by We Too and Paisley Jackson will head to shoot twice. Nice run by the Lady Wolverines and an opportunity at a couple more points at the line here from Paisley Jackson. South fans make some noise as Paisley's first one hangs on the rim forever and falls away no good. Timeout. 30-second timeout asked for by Coach Epler. A 
Again, it's uh, south on top of Riverton, 25 to 17, late third quarter. Coming up at halftime of the boys game, Coach Mike Bosner and a Lady Wolverine player will join us. That's the goal, at least. We got confirmation from the coach that he was going to remember us at halftime of the boys game. Of course, uh, boys basketball due up here in a few moments. If you're tuning in looking for that, they were supposed to start at 7.30. We'll be easily half an hour late for that one. We've been half an hour late through most of the junior varsity action. Paisley Jackson to the line out of the timeout. She's got one more. Let's it fly. That's short, but Cloud Horse is there to keep it alive for Riverton. We too reloads to Pasket. Now to Leesburg. Leesburg feed the paint to Cloud Horse. Turn around two off glasses. No good. Boy, that was a good look and a nice entry pass. We two just couldn't quite finish there. A loose ball now is gathered in by Leesburg. Here comes Talon to Engstrom. A long two in the corner is no good. Knocked out of bounds. We'll head to Cheyenne South. Chances there for Riverton, but unable to turn it into points. Riverton still on a 5-0 run. Fifty seconds remaining in the third quarter. South basketball as they slow things down here offensively. Morales put it on the floor once in her bright green shoes. Right side outside to Ward. Ward tried to go baseline. Boy, really close to being out of bounds. Now she's going to throw it out of bounds. And with 29 seconds left in the third quarter, it goes back to the Lady Wolverines. Leesburg will slowly jog it up the floor. Now pass it across to Pasket. Cami finds Taylin at the top. Leesburg right hand hip high dribble. We'll give it to Jackson down low. Good look from Jackson to Pasket, who can't hit the open mid range shot. Knocked out of balance off of Wiedemeyer. It'll stay with Riverton with 10 seconds left in the quarter. Get a Riverton sub. Timbery Mathill will check back in. Lob it up top to Wee Two. Cloud Horse. Right side. Ingstrom drives the baseline. Try to shovel a pass down low that is ultimately intercepted. And that is how the third quarter will come to an end. Paisley Jackson. Well after the buzzer, grabbed the basketball and lobbed up a really tough, long, Nikola Jokic-style three-point buzzer beater that, uh, well, did not beat the buzzer by a couple of seconds, but would have been fun had it did. Still was fun to watch it. So after three, it's Cheyenne South 25, Riverton 17. Come on back for the final quarter with us. You are watching the Lady Wolverines on County 10's YouTube channel and listening on 105.1 Jack FM. The Tyler Watson State Farm Agency is a proud supporter of Riverton High School Wolverine Athletics. We understand the importance of community, and we're excited to be a part of it. As your neighbor, we're here to help you with all your insurance needs. We offer auto, homeowners, renters, business, and life insurance. So stop in and say hi, or give us a call today. The Tyler Watson State Farm Agency will be here for you. Your home for RHS basketball all season long. 105.1 Jack FM. 
fourth quarter begins here from the James Johnson Winter Classic. Riverton looking to chip away into this Cheyenne South lead. Lady Bison have led throughout the ball game. They lead 25 to 17. Ball's knocked out of bounds. Stays Lady Wolverine possession. Leesburg will inbound in her front court. Taylin will get it to Jackson. Spots up for three. Can't get it to go. And rebounded by Montgomery. Here comes South on the run. Brennan ahead of the pack. Will wait. Let a defender fly by. Put it up and in. Jordan Brennan has 21 points on the evening. 30 seconds old in the fourth quarter. Leesburg across the timeline. Hounded defensively by Quist. Quist really a sticky defender. Jackson lose the handle, dribbled it up over her head, but it's kept alive by Mathil. Mathil runs right into Montgomery, who muscles it away, though, right along the baseline. Jackson fights for it back, is out of bounds, but you got to love seeing a hustle play like that from Paisley Jackson. Ten point Lady Bison lead. We have played a minute in the fourth quarter. Going to get the boys coming up for you. Following this one, be about ten minutes in between. Just enough time for a quick Bailey Tyronado post game show. Three pointer by Brennan in the corner is no good. Long rebound comes to Taylor. Leesburg will lead it ahead of the pack to Jackson. Jackson catches it on the run. Can't get the layup. Cloud Horse, good position, though. And she is fouled on the way up. Six thirty-six to play, fourth quarter, and we, too, Trying to cut this 10-point deficit at the free throw line. Our first free throw is good. Third free throw on the positive ledger for Cloud Horse. She's got five points total tonight. Had 22 last night. Second free throw, no good, too strong. And a rebound tracked down by Amaya Smith. You probably heard the band and the students cheering there, trying to distract the Lady Wolverines at the free throw line, which they have been all day. Here's a foul, I think, on Cloud Horse on the ground. It's either on Cloud Horse or Leesburg. It is on Taylor Leesburg. That's her first. So ball out of bounds to South. This has been the most boisterous crowd by far that the Lady Wolverines have had to face opposition-wise, so a really good learning experience to play in a crowd like this and to get an experience on the road here. This is a tournament, but of course, South gets to host these games, so more or less a true doubleheader. Shot off the glass is no good. We two there for the rebound. Up ahead to Jackson. Jackson can't get the shot to go, and a foul on the rebound is going to be tacked on to Riverton. This may be on Cloud Horse. We two picks up her third. She had those two really early and had gone quite a while without picking up that third personal, but she gets it with 6.20 to play in the ball game. Lady Bison advantage is nine on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. 27-18. Here's Jackson with his steal at midcourt. Paisley, the distance, right hand layup, got it. Paisley, Jackson in double figures with 10. Still six minutes remaining. See if Riverton can continue to chip away at things. Starts on the defensive side with some stops. Quist to Montgomery at the top. She'll spot up for three, banks it from the top. Tess Montgomery, the bank was open for her and she'll make it a 10 point advantage again. Jackson in backcourt, there's a 10 second violation. Paisley got double teamed, fell over backwards, got it away to Leesburg, but it was just too late. Great pressure defensively by South. Every time it looks like Riverton 
gets a little flurry of momentum. South really tightens up the pressure and makes something positive happen. There's a great entry pass to Brennan who tried to reverse layup, couldn't get it to go, and Engstrom is there. Leesburg hustles it into the Riverton front court, now finds Mathil right side outside. Lob pass dangerously in the paint, tipped away to Leesburg, keep it alive for Riverton, down low, shot for two by Taylor is no good. And rebound tracked down by South, it's Van Tassel who came out of there with it. We've played three minutes in the fourth quarter. Van Tassel travels. Back to the Lady Wolverines. Cheyenne South had a 26-23 win against Rollins earlier this year, and this kind of has the same similar pace of play. There's a South foul on the floor. It's their second team foul, and that's going to go against Montgomery, so that is her fourth. And Tess is going to check out. See Ward and Morales return to the Cheyenne roster. Here's Morton open for three in the corner. Can't get it to go. Tries to hustle down her own rebound. Knocked away to Mathil. A lot of contact in there and out of bounds to South. Amaya Smith was going to inbound, now she's going to check out. <laughs> Carly Wiedemeyer will inbound instead, and a stop in play. The official chatting with Coach Bosner. Got a warning, I guess. Saw that in a boys game earlier this year where the official stopped play, walked over to Coach Bosheets at Rock Springs High School. Didn't call anything, didn't give him a technical, but just, I guess, a verbal warning. There's Lawson Quist at the top with 420 remaining in the ball game on a 10-point Cheyenne South advantage. Cheyenne South has led throughout. They led six to three after one, 12 to seven was the halftime score. Morales will hold it way up top. South is content, trying to take some time off. Cami Paskett's content trying to get a steal and she'll knock it away. Comes to Lexi Taylor and Taylor's fouled in backcourt by Ward. I love the energy there from Cami Paskett who creates the turnover. Coach Epler now asking it for a full timeout. We'll take one with him. Cheyenne South 30, Riverton 20 with 3.58 to play in the ball game. We're back in 60 quick seconds. You're listening to the Lady Wolverines on 105.1 Jack FM and watching on County 10's YouTube channel. Construction is a local contractor dedicated to our community. We're proud to support our student athletes in every sport on and off the field. We believe in hard work, crafting excellence, and building legacies, one project at a time. We bring your vision to life. Visit GoddardConstruction.com to see what we can create for you. Goddard Construction, building Fremont County, one project at a time. Northside Auto Body Shop in Lander is proud to support sports and student-athletes for the 22-23 season. Northside Auto Body is a staple in the Lander community and is primarily engaged in automotive body, paint, and interior repair and maintenance. If you hit a deer or have a vehicle accident, Northside will get your repairs handled and accept all forms of insurance. Javi and the crew got you covered at Northside Auto Body Shop, 323 North 2nd Street, Lander. Find more Fremont County sports coverage on the County 10 Sports Podcast. 
Three minutes, 58 seconds to play in regulation. Lady Wolverines try, uh, trails Cheyenne South by 10, 30 to 20. It's RHS basketball as they stare into the south zone defense. Pass down low to Cloud Horse. Misses the first shot, gathers herself, and knocks in the second shot. We two with seven points now as Riverton applies some pressure in the backcourt. Here's Brennan, a game's leading scorer with 21. We'll get it to Morales up top. Long three, clanks off the back of the rim, and Morton makes sure they're one and done. Savannah on the run with the basketball now. High dribble, she'll control it. Left side, outside, she goes to Paisley Jackson. Jackson looking to the paint. We'll hand back to Leesburg, spot up, long three. That's off to the left, no good. And long rebound is gathered in by Wiedemeyer. She's fouled in backcourts. Ball out of bounds to Cheyenne South. South. Will inbound after they finally say the foul was on Taylor Leesburg. Move them to the new designated inbound spot. Coach Bosner asking for an explanation, but part of the new rules this year is on certain violations, they have designated spots where they inbound the basketball. It's not always right where the violation took place anymore. Long pass, Brennan does a nice job tiptoeing the baseline to keep it alive for South and the Lady Bison reload with three minutes remaining in the ball game. Here's Brennan open for three. Pump fake will try the three, no good. And Leesburg will pull it down. Leesburg had a defender around her arm too and she still was able to come away with the rebound. Taylor down the lane, shovel it to Engstrom. Good pass, good layup for Haley Engstrom. First field goal of the ball game for Haley, and it's a six-point game all of a sudden. 2.37 to play, 30-24. to 24. South on top of Riverton here on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. Morton playing defense on Quist. Quist will stop for a mid-range two, can't bank it in. Big bounce for the rebound is tipped in backcourt, and South is going to go back to grab it. Official makes sure everybody knows that it was deflected off of Riverton. No over and back violation. Van Tassel down the lane. Pretty move for Kalen Van Tassel to get to the rack. Lay it up and in. Inside of two minutes. Here's Jackson spot up for three. In and out, no good. Haley Engstrom is tied up. And possession arrow will give that to Cheyenne South. Well, Riverton cut this deficit to six a moment ago. It's at eight. But in such a low-scoring game, it feels like every two-pointer is massive. And... Clock is on the side of South right now with 1.48 to play. Here's Brennan wide open, two in the corner, no good. Kept alive though Montgomery, but ripped out of there by Jackson. Paisley will take it away, lead it up the floor. Pass in traffic is knocked out of bounds. Coach Bosner will gather the loose ball and hand it back to the official. Taitlin Leesburg to trigger it in for Riverton in her own front court. Leesburg goes up top to Jackson. 133 clock ticking. Pasket finds Leesburg. Leesburg, another long three from the top. That time it's off to the right side. Ingstrom put back is good. Big offensive rebound. Haley Ingstrom. Six point game again, but just 115 remaining. Coach Bosner wants to talk about it. Got to give credit to these Lady Wolverines. They continue to fight. It has not been the prettiest game for either side, really. And Riverton's offensive productivity way less than we've seen at times this year. But the fight and the energy continues to be there, which has got to be a positive for Riverton fans and this coaching staff. I want to thank all of you watching on County 10's YouTube channel. Always fun 
chatting and hearing from some of the folks back home. Thanks again to Becky for commenting, and we appreciate her watching along with us. And of course, we are also audio coverage on 105.1 Jack FM, which is KTUG, Hudson, Lander, Riverton, or at 8 o'clock on a Friday night. Boys game was supposed to start at 7.30. We are going to be well beyond half an hour late for that one. But like I said last night, that's okay. We'll stay up all night with you if we have to and enjoy some basketball together. Reset the scene here on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. 116 to play in the ball game. South on top of Riverton, 32 to 26. South held a 12 to 7 halftime advantage. So compared to that, it's been a barn burner in the second half, but Riverton has trailed the entire time. South basketball length of the floor to bring it. Pascott applying some defensive pressure to Quist. Quist will break the time stripe with a pass to Van Tassel. Van Tassel's being hounded by Leesburg. Leesburg right in her grill, did a great job defensively. Gets it away to Smith. One minute remaining, Amaya through the lane. Floater good, pretty shot for Amaya Smith, wow. Here's Paisley Jackson quickly into the front court for Riverton. Shot no good. Cloud Horse is there. Put it back up and in, though. We too shot was good, and Coach Bosner wants another timeout. We too's got nine points now. And Coach Bosner and the Lady Wolverines have two remaining timeouts. Coach Epler has one remaining timeout. I'll adjust that on your scoreboard. If you saw the graphic go across, it was Riverton that took that timeout. Boys basketball coming up 10 minutes after the conclusion of this one. We'll also get into our Bailey Tyre and Auto post game show. Select our player of the game, made possible by Tyler Watson at State Farm Insurance. And coming up at the half of the boys game, we'll chat with Coach Bosner and a Lady Wolverine player. 42 seconds remaining, six point game, and the length of the floor to go for Cheyenne South. Here's Quist, deed up and fouled hard in backcourt by Cammie Paskett, who quickly helps up Lauren Quist. Hard foul, but Paskett obviously had no ill intentions as she was right there to pick the defender up. That was the fourth team foul, so they had one to give right there, and now Lady Wolverines will force some free throws. Foul in backcourt. This time on Leesburg. That's Leesburg's fourth, too, so I guess you can't be choosy right here with 37 seconds remaining, but maybe not the person you want to have give up their fourth foul. Also lagged Caitlin Van Tassel to shoot two shots. She's got four points on the evening so far. Has not yet attempted a free throw tonight. First one is on the way. Hard off the back of the iron. No good. Still a two possession game as of right now. Kaylin has an opportunity to make it a three point game with this shot. Or a three possession game I should say. Free throw is short this time. Rebound by Paskett. 35 seconds. Riverton with an opportunity here, but they need some points quickly. Up top is Leesburg. Leesburg down low to Cloud Horse. Inside, outside, Paskett for three. That's no good short. Engstrom, the rebound, is knocked to the floor. A uh, held ball will be possession arrow Riverton. Savannah Morton returns to the RHS lineup. Twenty-one point nine on the clock. Riverton down by six. 
RHS ball, Leesburg to trigger it in underneath the Riverton basket, lobs it up to Morton, up top, Savannah puts it on the floor, now high pass to Leesburg, she'll try the three, that's short, no good, long rebound, fought forward, tipped at midcourt, and will come away to Lexi Quist, and it's a loss in Quist in Cheyenne South, and that may be the final nail in the coffin here with 3.9 remaining, a tie-up will give it right back to Cheyenne South. So give credit to the Lady Wolverines for battling throughout, but it looks like they're gonna drop to two and seven on the season. Smith to trigger it in with 3.9 left, does so underneath to Brennan who gets free, lay it up and in. She's got 23 on the night and that is the final. On the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard, it is Cheyenne South 36, Riverton 28. Tough shooting most of the night for these Lady Wolverines, but the heart certainly was there late in the ball game, trying to make things interesting, just came up eight points short, ultimately. Again, 36 to 28, the final. In uh, game number one of our doubleheader. Oh, yeah, quick timeout. When we come back, we'll get into a very short Bailey Tyronado post game show, recap some final scoring numbers, and select our Tyler Watson State Farm player of the game. Then we'll move on to boys' basketball coverage. Riverton and Cheyenne South in just a few moments. You've been watching the Lady Wolverines on County 10's YouTube channel and listening on 1051 Jack FM. This guy was driving way over the speed limit. Look at the damage. This guy was going a lot over the speed limit. Look at the damage. This guy was going a little over the speed limit. Look at the damage. Remax All-Star Realtors are proud to sponsor sports across Fremont County for the 22-23 season. Remax All-Star Realtors was founded in 1991 with the goal of doing real estate in a way that would make our clients' lives as easy and uninterrupted as possible. They've completed many, many transactions involving residential, commercial, vacant lots, farm and ranch, and investment properties, and can help you with any goal you might have regarding any of these today. Remax All-Star Realtors, 938 West Main Street, Riverton. See them online at Remax River. Welcome you back here on the Bailey Tire and Auto post game show. We're joined by head coach of the Lady Wolverines, Mike Mosner. Coach, I know uh, it was difficult with the cold shooting, but the heart was certainly there from your team in the, uh, the second half, and they made things interesting. Yeah, uh, you know, man, I. I have a really hard time with this because I I was a guy in stripes for almost 30 years and I have never seen a team just get beat up like we did and I, I don't I don't complain I try not to okay I could have got a technical foul just as easy as anybody there and I was I was on them the best I could trying trying to get something swayed and get something to go our way and it seemed like every opportunity they had to get us they got us and it's too hard it's, you can't come out here and play a team like this on their home court and have that kind of referee i mean i i don't i'm not here to complain but i am here to complain because that enough's enough you cannot go out there and play at the level that we want to play at when you're just getting the stop beat out of you What's your message to the team when that's your feeling about the officiating? How do you keep them focused when there's so much frustration? Yeah, well, it's really hard because they're all looking at me like, you got to be kidding me, coach. Okay, Paisley went up three or four times and just got pushed heavily from behind, and nothing was called. And then they called me a ticky-tack foul at half court, and I'm like, I mean, I was looking for a T. I ain't going to lie. I was looking, and they... they I guess they had a little respect for me because I was a man of stripes, you know, for many years, and that's fine. But holy cow! Um, but look, we didn't play that well either. I mean, 
the, there was a lid on that basket the first half. I mean, how many bunnies did we miss? And, I mean, their girls are working. They're rebounding. They're blocking out. They're doing all the good stuff that I asked them to do, right? And then every time we go up, we were either getting fouled or because they, they knew the foul was coming, they overshot the ball a little bit. So the shots were harder because they were getting fouled. I don't know. It's just a tough one. It looks like fundamentally, though, blocking out, rebounding, cold shooting aside, it looks like this team is embracing some of those things that you want. They fed the post a whole lot more tonight, it looked like. So uh, I got to take away maybe some silver linings in that another learning experience. Absolutely. And things are going the right way, hopefully, for well, you. Well, please know. I mean, there, there's frustration, but look, I love these girls. And they have. They have come a long way. You look at what we did last night, and we come here, and, and all of a sudden we, we score 63 points yesterday, and today we come out and we barely get – what 27 whatever it was um and you know sometimes sometimes you get a little hangover when you you know when you play that good as the way we acted last night the, the the offense that we ran the things that we did uh we come out tonight we just we just didn't get it done all right coach i know uh, you get a quick turnaround you'll get a game against laramie tomorrow so we'll chat with you then but uh it doesn't, doesn't get much easier tomorrow oh, and, oh. and another little road trip for you yeah you know laramie's been in the top five pretty much all year uh they're really big um yeah we're gonna come out look we'll put a we'll put a game plan together we'll come out we're gonna these girls i'm not worried about them showing up and playing they, they will come and they will play um we'll just see what happens coach thanks as always for coming up good luck yes, tomorrow sir. appreciate, appreciate you. you mike bosner the head coach of the riverton lady wolverines obviously upset with uh some of the officiating and some of the calls with uh, the uh, the first game in our doubleheader again, Lady Wolverines fall 36 to 28. Taking a real quick look here at final scoring numbers. This is the Bailey Tire and Auto post game show. By the way, as we'll get their graphic appropriately on your screen. Final score 36 to 28. Uh, Lady Wolverines were led in scoring by Paisley Jackson with 10 points, nine from We Two Cloud Horse, and it goes five points for Haley Ingstrom, uh, two points for Savannah Morton, and one point for Cammie Paskett. Tatum Tyra also had one free throw. Jordan Brennan was lights out for Cheyenne South. 23 of the 36 points were the seniors. Jordan Brennan, uh, four points for Kaylin Van Tassel, four points for Tess Montgomery, three points for Amaya Smith, and two points for Carly Wiedemeyer. Time to select our State Farm player of the game from Tyler Watson. At State Farm, they're ready to protect your future. Tyler Watson is a proud Lady Wolverine supporter, an RHS alumnus, and great community supporter. We appreciate Tyler being with us all season long. And uh, in a loss, I always like to pick somebody on the victorious team to give a nod to, and it is impossible to not pick Jordan Brennan. 23 points, the senior leader was just fantastic for Cheyenne South. For the Lady Wolverines, I'm going to go with senior Paisley Jackson. I thought Jackson did uh, a lot of nice things offensively again with her 10 points. Got a couple of three-pointers, gave her team a lift when they needed one, but uh, also just really liked the scrappiness, the hustle for loose balls. She got on the floor again, and Paisley Jackson is uh, one of those players that feels like you could give it to her just about every time, but I just uh, I saw her diving for loose balls, getting after things on the floor so appreciated the effort for paisley jackson our tyler watson state farm players of the game once again the final score cheyenne south 36 riverton 28 this has been the bailey tire and auto post game show let's catch our breath we'll take a one minute time out when we come back we will get you ready for boys basketball coming up in just a couple of minutes on county 10's youtube channel and 105.1 jack fm John Shade, your Edward Jones financial advisor. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement of our young athletes from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of the Lander Tigers on KOVE. Call John Shade or stop by my office at 824 West Main Street for all your investment needs. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Elevate Rehab's founding principle on you is evident from your first visit to the last. Our practice model ensures treatment as you deserve, a private one-on-one -on -one session with a licensed therapist the entire visit, every visit. 
All therapists hold advanced credentialing, including two certified hand therapists, an orthopedic clinical specialist, an MDT therapist, as well as pelvic floor and pregnancy rehab offerings. With the over 100 years of combined experience between our seven clinicians, Elevate is your ticket to help. Find us in Lander, do voice, and visit our website or Facebook page. Choose Elevate Rehab to elevate your outcomes. Basketball is on the air. Let's go courtside with the voice of the Wolverines, Jared Anderson. And a very good Friday night to you. Welcome back to Cheyenne South High School, where we're set for game two in our doubleheader this evening on County10.com and 105.1 Jack FM. Cheyenne South and Riverton High School boys basketball do up here in about a minute and a half. This is a very short Porter's tailgate show made possible by Porter Supply Company at Sunset and Federal in Riverton. Cheyenne South enters tonight's contest winless. They are 0 and 8 on the season. Riverton sitting at 4 and 4 overall. Cheyenne South lost to Evanston last night in the James Johnson Winter Classic 60-36. Meanwhile, Riverton lost a hard-fought game to Natrona County 60-50. to Not sure that 10-point differential is indicative of how tight of a game it was all the way through, but uh, numbers don't lie, and Natrona pulled away there in the fourth quarter. Chad DeBrun is in his second year at Cheyenne South. They went 4-19 last year. South has not been to a state tournament since 2016 when they finished second overall. They have qualified on the boys' side three times in their 13-year school history. Bo Sheets, head coach of the Riverton Wolverines, wants his team to rebound better. They want to stop giving up second chance points and handle the basketball better down the stretch. Riverton a little short-staffed again tonight. They do not have Eli Lucas. They do not have Brody Dale, a couple of their leaders. They do have Derek DeVries back in the lineup who, according to Coach Sheets, is about 80% after sustaining an ankle injury early in practice. Riverton will be introduced to this Cheyenne South crowd here first. They are the designated visitor team at South High School. Riverton will be in their away Cardinal Red jerseys. Derek DeVries, number one, is introduced first. He had 10 points in his return to the lineup last night against Natrona. Number two, senior is Ty Sheets. Ty averaging 7.6 points per game. There's the leading rebounder for the Wolverines, Dre Monroe. Monroe averages about nine rebounds a game and chips in about seven points per ball game. Dre wears number four. Uh, and number 24 is Hunter Hauk. Hauk, a senior, a leader on this team, does a lot of things away from scoring the basketball. And uh, number 12 is Parker Paxton. Paxton, another senior, leads this team scoring, averaging 22 points per game. For the Cheyenne South Bison, Gabe Hernandez is their leading scorer. He wears number one. Number uh, five is Noah Hagberg. Hagberg, a senior. Number 13 is Peyton Jire. Jire, a senior. Number 23 is Caden Hart. Hart, also a senior. And Dylan Wilmarth is a senior wearing at number 24. That is the starting lineups for both of these teams. Seniors all around. There are 10 seniors on the court starting this game for either side. Jared Anderson, Jason Peterson with you from Cheyenne South High School. We're so glad you're with us for Chapter 2 of our doubleheader. We are officially 47 minutes behind schedule for this boys' start time, but appreciate you hanging in there with us. It's Dre Monroe in the jump center circle. He'll go opposite Peyton Jire. Cheyenne South again in their home white uniforms, trimmed in gold and black. Riverton in the away Cardinal Reds, trimmed in white and black. Riverton written across the front. South written across the front for the Bison. There's the opening whistle. Ball is in the air. Dre Monroe clearly wins the tip off. Parker Paxton had to try to save it. Gives it up right to Hernandez who soars in. Misses a layup and we're off to the races early. Here's Ty Sheets. Riverton's first possession as DeVries will try a three and drain it. DeVries from Sheets. 
three-pointer for Riverton. Derrick had the first points of the game last night for RHS. This time it's a three ball from Derrick. Hageberg. Give it back to Hernandez. Gabe tried to go down low and it's taken away by Houck. Hunter with the interception. Here comes Derrick on the run with it. DeVries, right hand dribble. Scoop it back out to Houck. And now he'll give it up to Derrick. Derrick fake one way, go the other way. Loses defender, baseline drive, and got it. Derrick DeVries, five. Cheyenne South, nothing in the first minute of action. South, one of the few teams with names on the backs of their jerseys. Didn't see that for the ladies, but the boys have names on the back. Actually, I think it just says herd on the back. The bison herd, so totally wrong with that. Knocked out of bounds goes to Riverton. Unless the whole team's name is herd, in which case then their names are on the back, but I don't think that's what's happening. Five to zip, Riverton on top early on that Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. Thanks again to Porter Supply Company. We didn't get much of an opportunity. I was anticipating Coach Bosner at halftime of this game, but he chatted with us between games. And a very upset Coach Bosner. I think probably wanted to get media out of the way and come deal with me quickly. Foul was given to Gabe Hernandez, by the way, there, as that's the first foul on either team. Inbound pass is intercepted by Gabe, so some redemption there. He'll give it up to Hart on the run with it. Now, Gabe stopped for a long off-balance two that skims the net no good. Saved by South, but right to Riverton. Here's Dre Monroe to Parker Paxton. Spot up three that's no good. Dre soars for an offensive rebound. Put it back in the paint, good. Draymond Rose stick back two is his first point, and it's seven to nothing Wolverines early on. Hart will try a three that's no good. Planks the back of the iron. Hernandez is there for the rebound out of his hands though, and it comes away to Sheets. Ty will push the tempo for Riverton. Sheets can't get a shot in the lane to go, but he draws the contact. Ty Sheets will. Step to the plate. It's not a plate, it's a stripe, but I wanted to come up with a different term for free throw line. So I want baseball on you. First one for Zai is knocked down. Ties an 86% free throw shooter this season. And he'll keep that average going strong. He knocks them both in. Nine to nothing. Riverton, 533 to play first quarter. An offensive foul running into Draymond Rowe was Dylan Wilmarth. And Wilmarth picks up the personal. Got a timeout being asked for by Cheyenne South head coach Chad DeBrun. Wants well, a quick 30 second break to settle his guys down. 5.41 to play first quarter. It's Riverton 9, Cheyenne South nothing. And if you're a Wolverine fan, you just have to absolutely love that start. Good shooting. Derek DeVries with a three pointer to start the game. Follows that up with a drive and a bucket. Draymond Rowe. It's a field goal and Ty Sheets two for two with the free throw line. The scoring so far. Give a big hello to Mike who has joined us on the County 10 YouTube chat saying tuning into the Riverton game after watching a big win for the Central Wyoming College men's team. They beat Otero College tonight. Heard that game with John Gabrielson. So, Mike, we welcome you and welcome any of those wrestler fans who've made their way over to check out Wolverine basketball. I'm Jared Anderson. Jason Peterson is our fantastic camera operator here from South High School. Eli Lucas has entered the ball game, so it's good to see Eli back. 
He was not in the lineup last night. Eli, baseline, will scoop it up to Sheets. Sheets at the top for three, it's good. Ty Sheets with the triple. And officials are gonna stop play and get together. I'm not sure what that's about. They're discussing at the far end something with Coach Bo Sheets. Back to action. Still not sure what happened, but something. <laughs> That's my expert analysis. Something happened. It's 12 to nothing. Riverton pass underneath. Wide open was Burns. He couldn't get it to go. Follow is no good, but Bowden Burns draws the foul. Bowden frustrated with that first miss. Was wide open. Couldn't get it to go, but Bowden, the senior, will go to the line for an opportunity at the first Points from the stripe for, or the first points of the game for Cheyenne South. First to two for Bowden, lets it fly hard off the back of the rim, no good. I want to thank Red and Kane and Associates in Riverton. Proud to support our local student athletes. Red and Kane and Associates, your tax professionals. They're proud of these Wolverines' hard work on and off the court. Red and Kane and Associates, 202 North of Broadway in Riverton, online at rivertoncpa.com. Burns second free throw, almost banked it. No good though, stays out. And Cheyenne South still looking for their first points of the game. We've played 3-10, Riverton out in front, 12 to nothing. Paxton lost the handle at it, taken away by Jire. Good defense by the Bison. Here's Hart with a hand in his face from uh, Hauk. Shot was no good, Paxton's there for the rebound and he draws a Broden Burns personal foul. That is the fourth foul on Cheyenne South. So ball out of bounds one more time this quarter to Riverton. 4.37 to play first quarter now. The lead is a dozen. Riverton looking to add more. There's Eli Lucas at the top. He'll hand back to Ty Sheets. Sheets already with five points. Give it to Blake Gattenbein for the first time. Now Eli, good to have Eli back in the lineup for sure. Here's Sheets hanging in the air in the lane. That's in and out, no good. Out of bounds off of South. Preston Decker tried to get the rebound, got a paw on it, and slipped out of his grasp. Hauk will trigger it in under the RHS bucket. Does so to Lucas, open for two, got it. Good pass, good entry play, and Lucas is there with the finish. Boost the Riverton advantage now 14 to nothing for the start, midway through the first quarter. Burns at the top, high dribble and a carrying violation. I wasn't completely sure that Burns came down with the basketball after he dribbled it so high. He definitely made the palming motion, but then kind of caught it. So I'm not sure there was an official dribble there, but the official saw it that way, and officials are way better at that than I am. But I think you almost kind of anticipate things like that happening when you see that motion sometimes. There's Lucas right side outside, now to Hauk, Hunter as Isaiah Sanchez all over him defensively. Tried to find Draymond Rowe, pass was intercepted and taken away. Here comes South on the run, trouble dribbling it, and it squirts away to Derek DeVries. Riverton back in control. Lucas to Gattenbein, open three, no good, and rebound by Jire for Cheyenne South. There's Hernandez, can't control the dribble. Eli Lucas will lead the charge for the Wolverines. Lucas spins, tie up, good hands by Gabe Hernandez to force the possession arrow. Riverton keeps it on the arrow.
Now the inbound man again under the Riverton bucket. Lob intended for DeVries is gathered by Hernandez. Hernandez to Hart all alone. Lay it up and in first points for Cheyenne South. Belong to Caden Hart on a nice dish from Gabe Hernandez. Blake Gattenbein hanging the air right side. Can't get the bucket to go. Foul on Hauk on the rebound. Hunters first. Team foul number two on Riverton. 2.50 to play first quarter. Riverton started the game up 14 to zip. Sanchez goes right side outside to Jire. Jire will have it stripped and taken away by Dre Monroe. Monroe quickly across the timeline. Monroe zigging, zagging, good body control, soft touch shot. Dre Monroe makes it look pretty. Hagberg has Halka on him defensively. Boy, these Wolverines are fired up and ready to go on defense. Sanchez loses the handle. It's taken away by Dre. Give credit to DeVries as well there. Monroe misses the layup, but Derrick's there for the follow. Put it back up and in. And it's 18-2. Riverton out in front. Six minutes old from Cheyenne South High School. Hart to Hernandez. Gabe will try an off-balance long two. Floating to his left. Couldn't get it. Hauk. Another rebound. Parker set up the Riverton offense. DeVries is all alone for three. He skims off the rim to the left. Hernandez makes sure Riverton's one and done this time. Hart, baseline drive is fouled by Monroe. Monroe turns to the official, shakes his head like, yes, I fouled him. Third team foul on Riverton, Monroe. Nope, that's the fourth team foul. Nope, the third. They had four for a second. We'll knock it back down to three. Three team fouls on Riverton with 1.31 to go. Ball out of bounds. Hagberg to trigger it in to Hart. Hart tried to put a move on and has it uh, stolen by DeVries. Here comes Derek. Great bounce pass to Paxton. Got it to go, and he's fouled. The Derek DeVries bounce pass dish to Parker Paxton in an opportunity at a three-point play. Riverton up 20-2. to two. And that, believe it or not, the first bucket for Parker. You don't necessarily like to see Parker's production diminish, but you really like to see that Riverton has... Another scoring threat with Derek DeVries, who has seven already tonight. And Eli Lucas, who was out yesterday, is back in the lineup. And by the way, Riverton's still not at full strength. Brody Dale is sick at home this weekend. So Brody, if you're watching, or to the Dale family, we wish you the best and get healthy soon. We can't wait to watch you back out here competing for Riverton High School. Here's Hart. Right side in the corner. Snap an entry pass down low that's deflected and taken away by Riverton. Paxton's on the run. Leave it for Ty Sheets, and Sheets wisely will slow it up. Parker's just going to square up for three. That's no good. And rebound taken away by Hart. Hart with 27 seconds to play in the quarter to Sanchez. Now a long two from Preston Decker as well short. And a technical foul has been given to somebody. Jason, you see anything? I don't see anything either, but I saw the technical sign. So somebody probably said something or they're going to say it's on Noah Hagberg. I'm not sure what Hagberg said or did. I missed it. You may have seen it on the screen, and I just missed it, but Parker Paxton will go to the line to shoot two times, and the first one is good. Hagberg will 
take a seat on the bench as Coach Chad DeBrun visits about it with an official. Parker's second free throw, no good, front rimmed. So he hits one of two technical shots. Riverton basketball, 15 seconds now to play in the first quarter. Here's DeVries holding it at the top, takes a look at the clock. Now he'll put it on the floor. Derek gathers it in, gets it to go. Count the buckets or on the floor? No, on the floor. I thought we were playing in the NBA for a second. I wanted the continuation, but they're going to say that's on the floor. That will be the fifth team foul, though, so Derek does get two free throws with four seconds to play in the first quarter. First for Derek is a swish. He's got eight points now. Quarterback toes the mark again, lets it fly, and that one is also good. See if South can get a shot off here before the quarter break. They cannot. And so after one, it's been all Riverton Wolverines. They started on a 14 to nothing run after the first quarter. It's Wolverines 24, Cheyenne South 2. Step aside for a 60-second timeout. When we're back, we'll bring you second quarter action. You're listening to Riverton High School Basketball on 105.1 Jack FM and watching live video on County 10's YouTube channel. Mountain View Supply, your local experts in fire and water. We got everything you need for new installs to accessories, and don't forget our great selection of stoves, grills, and spas. We've been serving Wyoming for over 40 years, so you know you can trust us for quality products and expert service. Visit portersmbs.com or stop by our Riverton or Casper locations today. Porter's Mountain View Supply, located on 750 East Sunset Drive in Riverton. Myers Gambles is your one-stop shop for furniture, mattresses, and appliances in Lander, Wyoming. We have an unbeatable selection of furniture for your living room, bedroom, and dining room. Plus, we have the latest trends in home furnishings. Our mattresses are comfortable and affordable, and our appliances are built to last. Whether you're looking for a new TV, sofa, or refrigerator, we have the perfect finish, style, and function for your home. Visit us at 420 Main Street in Lander, or check out our website, landergambles.com. Back to the ball game. Here's the voice of Riverton Sports, Jared Anderson. Second quarter is officially underway. Great opening quarter for Riverton fans. 24-2, the Wolverines lead. Maybe their most convincing quarter of the season so far. Had a couple of great games at the Flaming Gorge tournament, but not quite like that eight minutes, I don't think. Here's Hart with the basketball. Good feed down low. Wanted Aiden Mitchell, who just checked in. Aiden tried to reverse a layup. Couldn't get it to go, but a foul tacked on to Riverton on the rebound. 22 seconds into the third quarter. Just ball out of bounds, I guess. Ball out of bounds, no foul. Out of bounds out for Riverton. Hart at the top. Stop left side elbow. Go to Mitchell. Turn around two. That's no good. And DeVries is there for another board. Here's Hauk to Monroe at the top. Dre between the legs dribble. Picks it up. Double teamed. He'll find Derek DeVries who has to save it. Derek does, but to a defender, Burns. Taken away by the Bison. Trying South trying to get something to go after just two first quarter points. There's Burns in the corner for three. That'll do it for Cheyenne South. Good from Broden Burns. Quickly, Paxton tried to answer. Shot no good. Monroe the rebound. Put back is no good and taken away again by the Bison. So missed opportunity there for Riverton offensively. Cheyenne South right back to it. Hart will shovel it off to Hernandez. Gabe stop at the free throw line. Fade away from there. Pretty shot. Gets it to go. Gabe Hernandez, the Bison's leading scorer with his first points on the night. Hernandez averages 20.3 points per game. Here's DeVries. Get past one finger roll. Got it. And he's fouled. That quick first step from Derek DeVries. And Derek... 
has uh, already surpassed his total from last night. He had 10 last night. He's got 11 so far tonight. His free throw, though, was left short. And a whistle on the rebound. The official is pointing at Cheyenne South, and they're going to send Derek back to the line. So it must have been a lane violation. That was a really unorthodox lane violation call, if that's what it was. It could have been something else, and now Coach DeBron is lobbying his case, getting an official that's shaking her head right back at Chad. Derek will make good on the free throw, so whatever that violation was costs South a point as Derek will convert the three-point play in a roundabout way. There's a Riverton foul. On the floor, it'll be ball out of bounds. Dream Monroe did pick up his second personal. Aiden Mitchell will throw it right to Derek DeVries, who intercepts it. DeVries, baseball pass intended for Paxton and too far, and taken away by Hernandez. Caden Hart finds Hernandez, little stutter step, couldn't get the layup to go, though. Faked one way, got to the rim, and couldn't get it to go. Malachi Smith is there for a rebound, and he is fouled. It's going to be the second on uh, Broden Burns. Riverton on top of Cheyenne South, 27 to seven. We've played two minutes in the second quarter. Parker Paxton trots it across the time stripe. Now give it to Lucas, baseline drive, shovel it out to Gattenbein, open three corner is no good and up high is Broden Burns for the rebound. Broden gonna hustle it into the front court for Cheyenne South. He'll leave it for a teammate who streaks in, gets it to go, and he's found. That's Dylan Wilmarth. Good dish in Wilmarth as an opportunity at three points. Dylan really went up strong. Knew he was gonna get the contact and Still completed the shot. Free throw for Dillon is good. And that cuts the South deficit to 17. Lady Wolverines fell earlier tonight. They've gone 0-2 from the James Johnson Winter Classic so far. Chance at redemption tomorrow against a tough Laramie ladies team. One o'clock for the tip off there. Here's Ty Sheets for three. That's in and out, no good. And a save along the baseline by Mitchell. We'll keep it alive for Cheyenne South. Mitchell right back in action offensively. He'll pivot around, dish off to Burns who leaves his shot short. And it's Gattenbein there for the rebound. Gattenbein the outlet. Here's Paxton who traveled with it. I think Parker just kind of hit a slippery spot and just kept scooting. DeVries will check back in after a real quick breather. Parker Paxton will take a, sit on, uh, take a seat on the bench. Assume that'll be a quick break for Parker as well, the four-time state golf champion. Hernandez, left side, outside, he goes to Mitchell. Mitchell pick up the dribble. Now Des Walters, who's just checked in, has it. Walters will let the pass go through to Dylan Wilmarth, who lays it up and in. Dylan has the last five points of the ball game, and Cheyenne South slowly chipping away at things here. It's now a 15-point game. Riverton started the game up 14 to nothing. Sheets. At the top stop at the free throw line, hang in the air and a pretty shot for Ty Sheets. First Riverton bucket in a little bit. 29 to 12, the RHS advantage nearing the midway point of the second quarter. Mitchell is fouled. 
put up a shot, but the official says foul on the floor first as he got knocked to the ground. Ball out of bounds. To the Bison. That personal foul went on Dylan Wilmarth, his second. There is Dylan with the basketball, and now he relives to Aiden Mitchell, the junior. Hernandez will try a long three that's left short. Long rebound is gathered in by DeVries. Pushes it into the front court for the Wolverines. Parker Paxton stop at the baseline. Pivot around 360. Back out to Derek. Derek stop in the lane. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound though. Now around they go to Ty Sheets who travels. Sheets wanted to go right side baseline and just did not put it on the floor quite quickly enough. Dick Quayle, Pat Patterson, the assistant coaches for Riverton High School. Bo Sheets having a conversation with an official. Nods his head in agreement, so casual conversation there. Hart has his pass slapped and taken away by Blake Gattenbein. Here comes Blake into the front court. He will slow it up and give it to Derek, who hands right back to Blake. And now Blake tried to find Parker, but throws it in backcourt. And it'll go out of bounds to South. Nice hustle play defensively by Gattenbein. Wolverines just unable to protect the basketball on the offensive side. Hart to Wilmarth. Dylan Wilmarth's had a nice ball game. He'll give it up to Gabe Hernandez. Hernandez switches hands mid-air. Can't get his shot to go with the right hand. And here comes DeVries on the run. Derek down the lane. Some contact and an offensive foul in there to take the DeVries charge was Peyton Jire. You could see Peyton for quite a while preparing for that contact and stood his ground. And Jire is rewarded with Derek's first personal and the ball back. That was the fourth team foul on Riverton, too, by the way. Still 2.50 to play second quarter. Hanging in the air, Wilmarth leaves a shot short. Tracked down by DeVries, quickly up to tie Sheets. Sheets baseline past one defender, can't finish the shot, though. Off the glass, had a pretty move, just left a layup, no good. Wilmarth will spot up for three. It's good, but he traveled first. I think Coach Sheets called that one well before the official did. The whistle came after the shot was in the air, but the official almost looked like he had trouble reaching for his whistle. Traveling violation. Send it back to the Wolverines. 29-12, the RHS advantage. Riverton fell to Natrona County High School yesterday. 60-50 to 50 was really a great game. Riverton had a two-point lead going into the fourth quarter, but Natrona pulled away in the second half. DeVries from 15 feet in and out, back in again. Derek with 14. Hernandez, double teams, will leave it for a teammate. Waters, shot is no good, and Dez... Tried to hustle in for the rebound, but Parker was right there to take it away for Riverton. Here's Derek, left alone. Three is nothing but net. Derek DeVries putting on a show in just his second game back after the ankle injury. The senior now with 17. Good move to the lane by Dylan Wilmarth. Lay it up and in. Wilmarth now with seven. Impressed with that senior's effort so far. 90 seconds to play in the second quarter. Here's Monroe at the top. Monroe trying to put a move on Waters. Will turn and hang for a mid-range jumper, and he just makes it look effortlessly uh, so good right there. Dre Monroe with six. Waters in the post. Double teams to Mitchell and a blocking foul. Peyton Jire actually had the basketball, and Jire will go to the line. That's the fifth team foul on Riverton. 
That one went against Eli Lucas. Eli's third personal. Big Red up 36 to 14, 108 remaining in the second quarter. Riverton led 24 to 2 at the end of the first quarter. So this quarter, as of right now, is tied at 12s. First free throw is no good for Jire. Peyton will have one more chance at it. Second, no good, too strong. And Monroe had a nice block out. He had a lot of contact, thought there might be a foul, but was nothing called. Sheets gathers it in for Riverton. Ty is being hounded defensively by Hart. Does a nice job on the dribble. Now he'll give it up to Parker. Paxton will back off the dribble. 48 seconds remaining in the half. Hernandez on Paxton will strip it away, taken away. Parker is slow to get up in backcourt. Loose ball tipped around. Parker hobbles back into the play. Ball hangs in the air. Tough shot was no good. And now South continues to scrap for the basketball. They're going to call Dre again on the foul. No, they're going to call Hauk. Hunter Hauk. Now with three personals. So Hunter Houck and Eli Lucas both have three in the first half. And Bowden Burns takes his place at the line. Free throw no good, too strong for South. It's been tough at the charity stripe for the Bison. Malachi Smith checks in. Dre Monroe comes out. Burns back to the line. His second free throw in and out and stays out. Hunter Houck grabs the loose change. Parker Paxton looks back to full strength after he hobbled down the court last time. Holds it way up top, and now Hernandez collides with him. Gabe wanted to go get a steal while Parker was kind of turned around looking at Coach Sheets, but he just ran right into Parker. And Gabe will pick up the quick second personal foul. Third team foul on South Ball out of bounds. Malachi will trigger it in with a long wingspan from Burns in his face. 13 seconds remaining in the half. Riverton trying to extend their 36 to 14 advantage. Gattenbein will give it to Paxton. Paxton in the lane, shot no good. Off to the left, and here comes Mitchell up ahead for Hernandez, tipped away by Gattenbein, and that loose ball will take us into the half. So an entertaining half of basketball, especially if you're a Wolverine supporter. They lead at the break, 36 to 14 on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. Let's see if we can take a timeout here and get into the Buckle Up for Life Wyoming halftime show in just a couple of minutes. We'll run down first half scoring numbers, some individual efforts, and uh, try to find some other scores from around the James Johnson Winter Classic as well as Fremont County basketball for you to report on. And of course, get you ready for the second half coming up in just a bit. At the break, it's Wolverines 36, Bison 14. Back after this with the Buckle Up for Life Wyoming halftime show on Jack FM and County10.com. Did you see Allison at lunch today? No. I'm gonna text her. I'm gonna text Allison. Hey, hold up, Matt's calling me, Matt's calling me. Hey, we got hey, we got the food and we're on our way right now. <laughs> hey, who's coming, bro? <laughs> At Eyes on Fremont, we know that good vision is about more than just seeing clearly. That's why we're dedicated to providing expert eye care for the whole family. From children's exams to contacts, LASIK to glaucoma treatment, we're here to help. We accept most insurance plans and our experienced team will make sure you feel right at home. Schedule an appointment today at 111 South Broadway in Riverton or give us a call at 307-856-9000. Visit wyomingeyes.net to learn more. Ready to agree.
explore Wyoming's stunning parks at Fremont Motors during the Open Road Sales Event. We're giving away a complimentary Wyoming State Parks Pass with every vehicle sold, so you can get out and explore our beautiful state behind the wheel of a brand new vehicle. Plus, all Fremont vehicles come back by Fremont Care, so you'll be covered no matter what the Open Road has in store. Visit Fremont Chevrolet GMC in Riverton, or shop online anytime at FremontMotors.com and start your Wyoming adventure today. Perfect Power is a proud supporter of athletics and student-athletes all across Fremont County. Perfect Power provides services for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. Darren Hubble, owner and master electrician, has over 30 years of electrical experience. Darren's trustworthy team of professionals can get the job done right. Perfect Power, serving Fremont County and surrounding areas. Stop into 1320 West Main Street, Lander, or give them a call at 307-332-7184. Watch every RHS basketball game all season long on the County 10 YouTube page. Welcome you back to Cheyenne South High School. Jared Anderson, Jason Peterson along with you from uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming on a blustery evening. At the half, it's Riverton on top of Cheyenne South, 36 to 14. Riverton led 14 to nothing to start the ball game. They were up 24 to two at the end of the first quarter. So, if you want to look at it this way, positive for Cheyenne South. The second quarter went 12 to 12, but uh, it is still a large advantage for Riverton here at the intermission. Taking a look at first half scoring numbers, we'll start with the Bison. Dylan Wilmarth leads the way with seven points. Bowden Burns has three. Gabe Hernandez has two. Caden Hart also has two. I think uh, certainly what stands out there, aside from Dylan Wilmarth's nice first half, is Gabe Hernandez averages 20 points per game. He's the leading scorer for the Bison. He's held at just two points in the first half there. For the Riverton Wolverines, how about the return of Derek DeVries? He has 17 points in this one. Had 10 last night, but uh, 17 so far in just two quarters of basketball for DeVries. Ty Sheets has seven points. Dre Monroe has six points. And I'm telling you, those three field goals all looked uh, extra pretty. Dre with mid-range jumpers uh, and putting on a show with his three completed shots. Parker Paxton has four two points for Eli Lucas. Good to see Eli back in the Riverton lineup after he missed yesterday. Still down a player. Brody Dale is sick back at home, so uh, wishing Brody nothing but the best, but they'll get him back soon, and we haven't had a game yet where Riverton's been at 100% full strength because Derek's been out until this tournament, and now Brody, uh, we were down Brody and Eli yesterday, so uh, the best basketball, I think, is yet to come for Riverton for sure and uh, I know they were bummed after that tough Natrona loss but uh, you can you can hang in there with teams like that and uh, it's not necessarily all about playing your best basketball in January that's for sure you want to uh, head the right direction when we get into late February and March so good news all around for the Wolverines well if you missed it earlier tonight the Lady Wolverines fell to uh, Cheyenne South 36 to 28 that was uh, tough sledding for the Lady Wolverines offensively they trailed 12 to 7 at halftime so really uh, tough shooting for both teams but Lady Wolverines just really couldn't buy a bucket in the first half they had a gritty second half performance not a lot of shots fell but they were hustling after loose balls and played with a lot of heart Uh, not that uh, we want silver linings a very upset coach Mike Bosner came up to chat with us on the Bailey Tyrone Auto post game show and uh, was not happy with the officiating but also said his team needs to play a whole lot better so they'll have an opportunity to try to correct things tomorrow against Laramie. 
ladies are scheduled for a 1 o'clock tip-off tomorrow. The boys will follow that at about 2.30. I will follow that up by saying that our first two games were at least a half an hour late. So we'll see what happens tomorrow at Laramie High School from uh, the final day of this James Johnson Winter Classic. Cheyenne South Marching Band continues to play on. It's been a spirited atmosphere here from South High School throughout the evening. See if I can find a few uh, boys scores of interest from this James Johnson Winter Classic to report to you while we're at the break. We got a Fremont County boys basketball score. How about that? Wyoming Indian knocked off Grable this evening, 66 to 26. Good win for the Chiefs. And St. Stephen's edged Riverside at 70 to 68. So Eagles pick up the close victory with Saratoga knocking off Wind River, 88 to 47 in boys basketball. game uh, you got on the County 10 Sports Network that Wyatt Marichka did. Lander beat Orland 55-49 to from Pinedale. And scores from the James Johnson Winter Classic courtesy of yopreps.com. Evanston beat Wheatland in a double overtime thriller. It was 4A Evanston holding off 3A Wheatland 51-46. to Again, two overtimes there. Cheyenne East took care of Douglas. I guess take care is uh, a term I probably shouldn't have used because this one was uh, barn burner too. 59-56 to there in a big one. Number two East in 4A. Number one uh, Douglas in 3A there was East. 59, Douglas 56. Natrona all over Rock Springs, 82 to 54. Sheridan knocked off Kelly Walsh earlier today, 73 to 57. And it was Laramie's boys defeating Rock Springs, 64 to 45. So the third rated Plainsman will be the Riverton opponent tomorrow. And they were victorious against Rock Springs from Story Gymnasium today. At the half, it is the Wolverines on top of Cheyenne South, 36 to 14. This is the Buckle Up for Life Wyoming halftime show made possible by our friends at the Wyoming Department of Transportation who remind you to wear your seatbelt every trip, every time. It saves lives. Click that seatbelt. Buckle Up for Life Wyoming. If you're listening now on Jack FM, cruising around in your vehicle, make sure that seatbelt is fastened. It's 9 p.m. at KTUG Hudson Riverton Lander, and we are streaming video at county10.com and uh, on our YouTube page. 36 to 14, Riverton. We will start up the second half in one minute. Again, we're back after this on County 10 and Jack FM. County 10 is your Fremont County news leader. We're everywhere on the web, mobile, social, and on your radio dial with all the news you need to feel connected. From sports to board meetings and community features, we work hard to bring you all the latest updates you care about. Visit us today at county10.com. County 10. Community. Connected. Make your home improvement projects a breeze with Sutherland's, your home improvement experts. Always the right products at the right price. For every project, every day. You can shop and pay online at Sutherland's.com and we'll get it ready for easy in-store pickup. With the tools and the know-how, you can count on Sutherland's for any job. With over 30,000 items in stock, make your first stop at Sutherland's Home Improvement in Casper and Riverton. Basketball is on the air. Let's go courtside with the voice of the Wolverines, Jared Anderson. Second half of action set to begin from Cheyenne South High School. Riverton on top of the Bison 36-14. Jared Anderson, Jason Peterson along with you. Thanks for being with us on our YouTube channel and on 105.1. Jack FM. It's RHS basketball to start half number two. Same starters out there for the RHS boys. Draymond Rowe, Derek DeVries, Parker Paxton, uh, Hunter Houck, and Ty Sheets. Ball out of bounds. First uh, turnover, nice defensive pressure all around from Cheyenne South. 
South starters here in the second half. Gabe Hernandez, Noah Hagberg, Peyton Jire, Caden Hart, and Dylan Wilmarth. South in their white home uniforms. Riverton in the away. Cardinal Reds. Turnaround shot for two by Burns is no good. Up high with the rebound is Parker Paxton. Parker off to the races. We'll leave it for DeVries. DeVries has a game high 17. Now to Paxton. Spot up three. In and out. No good. Rebound tracked down by Burns. Here comes Cheyenne South momentarily. But Dre Monroe soars into the play and takes the basketball away. DeVries, right hand dribble, uses screen, a little separation. He'll try a long shot. That's no good. Paxton, keep it alive for the Wolverines. Parker, between the legs dribble, will back it way off. Now stop for a college range three that's no good short. And South had it for a second, then threw it directly to Ty Sheets. Ty will stop at the top for three. That's short. Rebound tipped by Monroe to Hauk. Another three attempts. Short again are the Wolverines. That was uh, DeVries who tried that three. Riverton, I think everybody at this point basically has shot a three-pointer and getting some practice shots in, but nothing going down. Timeout on the floor by Coach Chad DeBrun. This is his second timeout of the ball game. Gives us a chance to thank a couple more folks who make these broadcasts possible, like Goddard Construction, proud supporter of Fremont County Athletics. Goddard Construction offers friendly construction service. They're always on time and aligned with your budget. Give Goddard Construction a call. And thanks to Perfect Power Electric and Lander supporting athletes on and off the court. Give Perfect Power a call for your electric needs today. Welcome all of you on our County 10 chat. A big shout out to Rob, who is checking in from Cleveland, Ohio. I hear that city rocks, Rob. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio says he's a, a great friend of Brant Nyberg's. So a uh, shout out to Mr. Nyberg and shout out to Rob as well. Thank you to Becky. Thank you to Mike for tuning in. Mike brought it to our attention that the CWC men's team had a nice win over Otero College this evening in a game he watched John Gabrielson do for Russell Radio and then flipped over to our broadcast once that was concluded and uh, was catching the Wolverines. So hopefully for our Fremont County audience at least, it'll be a... Riverton sweep tonight with CWC and the RHS boys. Monroe with the steal, racing in, can't get it to go, but he draws the foul. I think they're going to say Dre was fouled on the floor before he got the shot off. They will say ball out of bounds to Riverton. That was the second personal on Aiden Mitchell and the first south foul of the third quarter. Sheets triggers it into Parker Paxton in the corner. Throws it up top to Derek. Derek backing in at the elbow. Now we'll shovel it out to Parker. Parker back it way off. Paxton tried to go down the lane, is double teamed, and a tie up forced by Cheyenne South. Defensive pressure, Preston Decker and Dez Waters double teamed Paxton. I know I gave. Uh, Obviously, Derek, a lot of credit for picking up uh, some of the scoring role here, but you're starting to see teams really target in on Parker Paxton, double team him in a lot of circumstances, and to try to take him away, averaging 22 points per game. Three ball on the way is off the mark for a Cheyenne South newcomer. I did not put in my roster. I'm going to try to hustle down number 31 for Cheyenne South for you on the fly. Here's Hauk in deep shot. No good. Tried to bank it home and left it a little bit short. Got to go to the backup roster to find a presumably underclassman who has come in for the Bison. Ball on the floor for a second is gathered in by Mitchell. There's that mysterious number 31 who tries a three. That's no good. That is Dimitri Cotton, by the way, a sophomore. Dimitri listed on the JV roster, so I'm hopeful that's 
who it actually is, but he's the only 31 I have, so we're going to go with that. Dimitri Cotton, a sophomore. Here's uh, Paxton shot partially blocked, and it goes to the floor, taken away by Decker, then taken right back by Dre Monroe. Monroe to Paxton, baseline drive. Good body control from Parker, and he draws the foul. No scoring yet in the second half, and we're already to the 436 mark. That was the second personal on Preston Decker. Second team foul on Cheyenne South. This quarter moving right along, but no points. Malachi Smith will return to the big red lineup. Eli Lucas. Well, inbound under into the left of the Wolverine hoop. Does so to Paxton. Parker. Baseline drive again and is fouled again. Parker so quick off of that first step and two times in a row he's burned a defender who's tried to get back on him and goes to the side of him and has to grab him to try to slow him down. That's... The exact same player, too, that's on Preston Decker. I think it's on Preston Decker. They had a long conversation about numbers at the scorer table. They've got him with three on the scoreboard, and I think that's going to stand. Baseline drive on the other side. Paxton is free for two there. Parker Paxton with his sixth point of the ball game. First points for either team this half. Pass taken away by Malachi Smith. Here come the Wolverines right back at it again. Left side, outside tie. She'd square up for three. That's no good. Lucas doing work to try to save it along the baseline, but does so to a Bison player. Here comes Waters. Waters is going to knock over a defender and taking the charge is Ty Sheets. Ty with good position and Des Walters picks up his first. DeVries back in. Paxton checks out. Midway point of the third quarter. Right side, outside, it's Eli Lucas. Lucas now on the drive, stop at the free throw line, can't get it, but Eli draws the contact. So Lucas will go to the stripe, looking to add to his two points tonight. Free throw is up and good from Eli. Second one is hard off the back of the rim, but Dre Monroe soars in for the rebound. Sheets. Stop at the free throw line, now is in the paint. Turns around, give it to DeVries, who's open for three. It's good. Derek's first points of the quarter. He's got 20. Riverton lead continues to grow. It's 42 to 14. Waters drive on the right side, can't get it, but he uh, draws the Malachi Smith foul. That'll be Malachi's first. Ball out of bounds to Cheyenne South with 3.22 to play third quarter. It's Riverton up big, 42 to 14. Draymond Rowe intercepts the inbound pass and hustles it across the timeline. Hands back to DeVries, kind of in a dangerous spot right there with the midcourt stripe, but luckily wasn't across yet. Parker spots up for three and drains it. Parker Paxton, big time shots. There's the Parker Paxton we know and love from the outside. Riverton started this game up 14 to nothing and South still sitting at 14 points. Eli Lucas with a hustle play to knock it out of bounds. Yeah. 
Lob to Waters. Waters blocked by Malachi Smith. Parker on the run now. We'll leave it for Lucas. Lucas had some trouble with the dribble. Goes low, gathers it, puts it up and in. All Wolverines right now. 2.33 to play third quarter. Three by Cotton is on the way. That's no good for the sophomore. Comes away to Parker. Paxton on the run again. We'll give it up to DeVries. Good moments here for Riverton to run some half-court sets. DeVries, or Dre Monroe, had it slipped out of his hands, and Monroe is now fouled. Dre will take a turn at the free throw line. That was the third personal on Aiden Mitchell. Goes around the rim and out on Monroe's first attempt. See Ty Sheets. Aiden for Malachi Smith. Dre's second attempt is good. Monroe now with seven. Out of bounds, swatted away off of Eli Lucas last. Will stay south possession underneath their own hoop. It's a 34-point Riverton advantage. Decker will leave it for a teammate. Long two is good. That's Dom Callahan who just checked in for the first time. So Dom Callahan, a uh, junior, gets the bucket and soaring in the other way is Derek DeVries, I believe, as I was looking down to find who Dom was. Try to catch that on the replay. Taken away by Eli Lucas. Lucas has some trouble handling it. That was Derek DeVries on the last bucket. Good baseline drive there as I see it on the replay of the stream. Here's Waters. Off glass two is good for Des Waters, his first points. So back-to-back -back trips with buckets for South. I guess there was a turnover in the middle there. Paxton tries the straightaway three. That's no good. Ball out of bounds. We'll go to Cheyenne South. Riverton with a 50-18 to 18 advantage. 32-point lead with 49 seconds to play in the third quarter. Thanks again to Fremont Chevrolet for providing our scoreboard updates. You see those on the bottom of your screen. Loose ball, I'll say tipped by a Riverton player. Goes south direction. The herd will inbound. A lot of, uh, of bison-themed stuff, as you might imagine, as you walk the halls here at Cheyenne South. Water is hard off the backboard is no good. And if you've been to Cheyenne at any point in the last few years, you know they've got these big decorative boots all around town, the boot sculptures as DeVries has fouled in backcourt. And uh, they've got one at the entryway to Cheyenne South High School. It's decorated in black and gold, bison colors too. That's the fifth team foul of the quarter. So free throws coming up here for Derek. And that was foul number four on Preston Decker. Derek's first free throw is good. He's got 23. Derek has outscored everybody. He's the only player in double digits. Hits them both. 18 seconds to play in the quarter. Here's Isaiah at the top for Cheyenne South. 
to Mitchell down low. He gets free, cannot hit the layup though, and Monroe will gather it in. Dre works his way through a couple of defenders in backcourt. Three seconds, here's Sheets at the buzzer, good! Ty Sheets now in double digits with 10. And at the end of the third quarter, it's Riverton 55, Cheyenne South 18. Come on back for the final eight minutes with us as we close out this one from South High School on 105.1 Jack FM and streaming video at County 10's YouTube channel. Ready to explore Wyoming's stunning parks at Fremont Motors during the Open Road Sales Event. We're giving away a complimentary Wyoming State Parks Pass with every vehicle sold, so you can get out and explore our beautiful state behind the wheel of a brand new vehicle. Plus, all Fremont vehicles come back by Fremont Care, so you'll be covered no matter what the Open Road has in store. Visit Fremont Chevrolet GMC in Riverton, or shop online anytime at FremontMotors.com and start your Wyoming adventure today. Perfect Power is a proud supporter of athletics and student-athletes all across Fremont County. Perfect Power provides services for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. Darren Hubble, owner and master electrician, has over 30 years of electrical experience. Darren's trustworthy team of professionals can get the job done right. Perfect Power, serving Fremont County and surrounding areas. Stop into 1320 West Main Street, Lander, or give them a call at 307-332-7184. Marines on the County 10 YouTube page. Eight minutes on the clock. This has been a fun one if you're a Riverton fan. A 37-point Riverton lead. They've been involved in a lot of close games this season, so it is kind of nice to just see them put a game together and they've cruised through three quarters. Still some work to do, though, as Ty Sheets hangs in the air from the right side. Shot is no good, knocked out of bounds. And we'll go to Cheyenne South. They get a foul down low. The official's going to make a slow walk over to the score desk, so I guess they did. And 25 seconds into the fourth quarter, Eli Lucas picks up his fourth personal foul. It is the fourth quarter. I will make sure the scoreboard actually says that. 7.23 to play in regulation. Here's Sanchez at the top. The senior will stop for a long two. That's left short, and Parker with a nice block out. Gets the board. Here comes Parker quickly into the front court. Down the lane will scoop a pass to Ty Sheets. Corner three is no good. He just hit one from there at the buzzer of the third quarter. Kept alive by Riverton. Paxton open three is no good. Doesn't miss many of those. And Jire will take it away for South for a second, but DeVries will cause the turnover. He just steals it away. Here's Parker, one-on-one, -on -one spin move, right side block, gets it to go, and he's fouled. You'll love to see that from Parker Paxton. At the end of the game, we'll select our Tyler Watson State Farm player of the game. As Parker knocks the free throw down, a few candidates, even though you could obviously look at DeVries in those 24 points. We did select Derek as our player of the game last night in his return, and we were able to chat with Derek, so uh, we will very likely pick uh, somebody else to talk to so we can get somebody different on the microphone in our uh, Bailey Tyronado post-game show. Cotton's going to try a long three. No good. He's over three from behind the arc. Lucas gets knocked over in backcourt and a foul on the Bison with 6.15 to go. That'll be the second personal on Dom Callahan. Forty point Riverton cushion now. Looking for more DeVries corner. Shot is no good. Sheets is gonna keep it alive. Tip it to Houck. Here's Paxton. Up top to reload the Riverton offense. Now Derek. Derek put it on the floor. Give it up to Houck. Houck. Shovel it back to Parker. Parker down the lane is fouled on the floor.
see five new Wolverines into the ball game. Line change, Ryan Cox is in, Josiah Hernandez, Aiden Kelly, Blake Gattenbein. And a Wolverine player I haven't seen yet. How about that? Coming off of the bench. I guess they probably had a space with Brody Dale out sick. Maybe just a jersey change for somebody, but I do not have a 15 anywhere. Jason, you don't know who 15 is, do you? Down here with the inbounding? Okay. Well, I've got uh, a name to look up here for you if there's a stoppage. It does appear we have a running clock. It's just continued to go with the 40-point differential now. 4-10 remaining. Here's Ryan Cox, right side baseline. There's that mystery player number 15 who puts up a three. That's no good. Put back is up and in Gattenbein. Inside of four minutes to play and a lot of the younger kids getting in the act here on both sides. There's Isaiah Sanchez open for two, and Sanchez will stick it in for uh, Cheyenne South. Cut the deficit back down to 40. Three and a half to play. Here's Gattenbein out to the mystery player again. I don't have a 15 anywhere in Riverton's roster. There's Ryan Cox for two up and good. First points of the ball game for Ryan. If you are watching on our YouTube feed and recognize number 15 for Riverton in that lineup, please feel free to throw his name into the chat section so I can give him some credit because there he is into the play again. Can't get it to go. DeVries left, or uh, Gattenbein left him with a nice pass. Here's Gattenbein again for three. That's no good off the mark. And rebound is tracked down by Peyton Jire. 2.45 to play in this one. Riverton going to pick up their fifth win of the season and in convincing fashion. Blake will take it away. Here's Blake off to the races one-on-one. -on -one. Right-hand layup is not there, but a big foul. Hopefully Blake's okay. He came down hard. And Gattenbein is going to go shoot a couple of free throws as that clock continues to run. It'll stop now with the free throws, or no, they'll wind it again. So Gettenbein, first free throw is no good, and boy, the players tried to get a rebound like it was a one and one. It is all two shots in high school basketball now. Brandon Monroe, number 15. Big shout out to Sheree. Thank you, Sheree, for that. Second free throw, no good. And boy, that was perfect timing, Sheree. Brandon Monroe with the putback up and in his first points of the ball game. Three corner from Cotton is no good with 90 seconds left. And a foul on Riverton will the ball out of bounds to Cheyenne South. That's just the second team foul. That was the first personal on Josiah Hernandez. So Brandon Monroe, I'm going to say his name a couple more times because his name eluded me there for a while. One minute remaining in the contest. Wolverines convincingly up by 44 points. Fadeaway shot is not going to drop for Cheyenne South. That was Cotton trying it again. Hernandez circles around, gets the shot to go. Josiah Hernandez, the junior, with the buckets. Clock is going to continue to run at May. Just run out by about the time Riverton can inbound here. Ball out of bounds to the Wolverines again. 22 seconds now. Monroe. Well, back it off. Coach Sheets, I think, telling them not to shoot. And they will dribble this one out. 
final score from Cheyenne South High School is going to be Riverton 66, Cheyenne South 20. How about that? A 46-point victory for the Wolverines on a Friday night. Fun from uh, start to finish if you're a Riverton fan. They led 14 to nothing to start the ball game, led 24 to two after the first quarter, 36 to 14 was the halftime mark. And man, after that, it was uh, just an onslaught of more Wolverine points. We will chat with a Riverton player coming up in just a couple of minutes. And we'll also chat with Bo Sheets, the head coach of the Wolverines. Once again, the final score here from Cheyenne South High School. It was Riverton 66, Cheyenne South 20. We'll get into the Bailey Tyronado post-game show in just a moment on County10.com and 1051 Jack F. County 10 is your Fremont County news leader. We're everywhere. On the web, mobile, social, and on your radio dial with all the news you need to feel connected. From sports to board meetings and community features, we work hard to bring you all the latest updates you care about. Visit us today at county10.com. County 10, community, connected. Make your home improvement projects a breeze with Sutherland's, your home improvement experts. Always the right products at the right price for every project, every day. You can shop and pay online at Sutherland's.com and we'll get it ready for easy in-store pickup. With the tools and the know-how, you can count on Sutherland's for any job. With over 30,000 items in stock, make your first stop at Sutherland's Home Improvement in Casper and Riverton. We welcome you into the Bailey Tyronado post-game show on County10.com and 1051. Jack FM Wolverines uh, decisive victory over Cheyenne South 66 to 20. And we welcome uh, senior leader for this Wolverine team, Parker Paxton, to the microphone. Uh, Parker, first of all, congratulations on a great game. I know last night was a little bit frustrating, such a competitive game, and then uh, things just wouldn't fall in the fourth quarter. So it's got to feel nice to come out and win a game decisively like this. Yeah, definitely. We had a film session um, midday today, and we kind of picked apart our defense and um, saw plenty of ways that we could improve. And really tonight it was from the very get go, our effort was there. And that's that's the whole thing for us. So, um, yeah, very encouraging coming out and stringing four straight quarters together. A very, very good defense holding a team to 20 points. Are you confident just about every time the ball leaves your hands, even with a hand in your face, it looks like it, it only takes you a fraction of a second to square up and shoot? Yeah, I am. Um, I try to shoot with as much confidence as possible. I know that um, I know that uh, a lot of them will fall, but right now I got to be better. I'm not shooting at a very high percentage from three right now, so um, I got to get that fixed to to help my team best I can. Derek coming back obviously helps uh, on both sides of the basketball, but he, he does more scoring. Does that help you at all? Do you, I know you're getting double teamed all over the floor, so you may not feel it, but uh, does that uh, long term going to provide some some looks for you having another weapon like Derek coming yeah, back? Yeah, no, I think teams are going to start figuring that out. If you're going to face guard me, then Derek's going to go and have 20 however many points that he had. Um, so I think I think once they figure that out, it'll take some pressure off me. But for now, you know, team-wise, I'm super glad that they're focusing so much on me because that opens up everybody else, and we're uh, we have five we put five guys on the court that can score the basketball. So. Parker, it feels like the the best basketball is still well ahead of this team. We haven't had a game this season that you guys have been at full strength. Brody's out. Eli was out yesterday. So uh, once it gets back to 100%, do you feel confident that you can beat just about anybody? I do. Yeah, I mean, beating East and Central are two of the best teams in the state, and we'll uh, we'll see Laramie tomorrow. But, I mean, for a everybody's really good. you got to bring it day in and day out. Um, like you just hit on, we haven't – really been full strength for a game yet this season and so um, the goal is to obviously peak at the end of the year so that's uh, that's what we're working towards. Laramie tomorrow make the trip over there what do you know about the Plainsmen? They're good they're really good they've got Neil Summers who is uh, who's a force and they've got 
he's got a very good supporting cast, so it's going to be a dogfight, but we'll be ready for it. All right, appreciate you coming up again. Congratulations on a, uh, a great night, and we'll look forward to uh, one more tomorrow. Thank you. All right, Parker Paxton joining us here on the Bailey Tire and Auto postgame show. I went in for the uh, the knuckles. He went in for the handshake. Then we reversed it, and um, I, I just had to make that awkward there. Uh, this is, again, the Bailey Tire and Auto postgame show. Thanks to Bailey's. They've got uh, three convenient pit stop locations in Riverton, one in Lander, and two full service tire shops in Riverton and Lander, respectively. They are your tire pros. And if I know one thing about winter driving in Wyoming, you want good tires and a reliable vehicle. So Bailey's can help you out there. Let's take a look at the final scoring numbers here. Again, it was Wolverine 66, Cheyenne South 20. And uh, we're going to put a couple of new graphics on your screen here real quick so I can give Bailey's all the love that they deserve, but I can't multitask and do stats and do that at the same time. So I'm going to talk my way through it. Cheyenne South uh, leading the way tonight for them. Dylan Wilmarth had seven points. Then it drops off pretty considerably after that. Bowden Burns has three. Uh, two points apiece for Gabe Hernandez, Isaiah Sanchez, Caden Hart, and Des Waters. And then I did have one more latecomer. Uh, Dom Callahan also had two points for Cheyenne South's 20. Boy, what really stands out there is Gabe Hernandez, who is a fantastic basketball player, a great shooter, averages over 20 points per game. Riverton holds him to just two points tonight. So big effort for the Wolverines defensively. Offensively for Riverton, they were led by their senior captain, Derek DeVries, with 24 points. Uh, then it goes Parker Paxton, who finishes the night with 12. Parker, just one three-pointer. That's not super characteristic of Parker, but uh, he does finish with a strong night at 12 points. Ty Sheets had another quality effort with 10 points, three in double figures there for the Wolverines, DeVries, Paxton, and Sheets. Then we go Draymond Rowe with seven points. I thought Dre had a fantastic ball game. Eli Lucas, great to have him back. He finishes with five points. Two points apiece for Blake Gattenbein, Josiah Hernandez, Ryan Cox, and Brandon Monroe. Uh, getting some time there down the stretch in a decisive Riverton victory. 66 to 20 again on the Fremont Chevrolet scoreboard. We are awaiting the arrival of Riverton head coach Bo Sheets, who will join us here in a little bit. And again, uh, we've got one more game to go for these Riverton boys. One more doubleheader for our broadcast tomorrow as Riverton girls and boys take on Laramie from Laramie High School. We got uh, girls action starting varsity wise at one o'clock and uh, the boys about 2.30, give or take a few minutes there, and we'll keep you connected with where we're at as far as start times on the County 10 YouTube channel. We comment when we're behind so that you hopefully have an idea and know what's happening. So we uh, are going to turn things over to Bo Sheets here in just a second as I stretch this out. The head coach making his way towards us on the Bailey Tyron Auto post game show. Coach Sheets, uh, appreciate you coming you over bet. again. And uh, we were just talking with Parker. I know things were frustrating, especially in the fourth quarter yesterday. So it's got to just feel great to come out and, and dominate in this one. Yeah, the, the boys did a really good job. You know, we talked about, you know, today we got to watch some film. That's kind of the nice part about being on the road sometimes is get back to the hotel, watch film, kind of look at what went well yesterday because there were some good things that went well yesterday. Obviously, to have a lead, you know, going in the fourth quarter is, is right where we wanted to be and then fourth quarter we we had a field goal percentage of 6.7 percent and so you're not going to win a lot of games doing that but but even early you know there's some little things defensively just kind of be in position early we're kind of half step just out of position or late and so that was a big big thing for us we really didn't care kind of what the score looked like uh, it was fun to come out and have a good effort you know obviously they're going to make some of those shots that they didn't make tonight uh, you know they're going to score more points than they did but but I liked our effort I, I don't know if this was part of your game plan or not but Gabe Hernandez uh, number one for them yep. averages over 20 points per game you hold him to two tonight yeah the boys did a good job you know on him he was coming in we didn't know a lot about him um, just because you know their film they got some of their best players back and so uh, we knew that he's a great scorer we played him this summer uh, the kid can just light it up so to 
but for our team to collectively hold him to two, uh, that was a big night for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch this team compete, and it looks like uh, you had an opportunity there to uh, kind of tighten up some of the things that you were concerned about, especially rebounds and second chances and just some of the loose ball stuff looked like yep. it got better tonight. Yeah, you know, exactly. That, that we were giving up height at times. You know, there's it, it could have probably been over the back, but our boys just battled. They got a hand on the ball. We got it. We pushed the ball a little better. Our tempo was better. Um, you know, a little, little better as far as being consistent, committed, you know, connected, I should say, on the defensive end. So, um, obviously, it's, it's kind of a, a game to get healed up. Felt like we probably could have won that game last night and should have. And so to come away without getting that, um, you know, it's fun to, to have a bounce back game like this. I keep telling your kids, too, and saying it on the air, but I think the most exciting thing about you right now is we haven't seen you at full strength yet. Right. You'll, you'll get Brody Dale back here yep. eventually, and we haven't had a game this season that you haven't had 100% of your roster. Exactly. You know, as a coach and as a team, it's fun to have your, your team full, uh, you know, full strength early, but we'd rather be full strength at the end of the season or in the middle than, than at the beginning. So it will be fun when we get everybody back, see where we're at, kind of get in shape, and uh, you know, see where the chips fall. Got a really good Laramie team tomorrow. Yes. What do you know about the Plainsmen? You know, they're, they're one of the top three teams. You know, they you put them in Central and East, and you, you put them in a basket, and they're probably going to be different winners every night. Uh, they're big kid in the middle. is a lot like Jokic for the Nuggets. Uh, you know, he posts up really well. If you double him, he throws out to the three. If you don't double him, he's going to score. Uh, he's very skilled, very athletic, and then they've got probably the best three-point shooting team in the state. Um, with some slashers. So they're they're a tough team, and they play defense. So it'll be a great test for us. I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, we beat them early last year, 25 points early, and then they got us at state. So I'm excited to see kind of where we'll be. Yeah, Summers feels like a really difficult matchup, uh, especially yep. with a team with not a lot of height, but sure. uh, he does so many things well. So looking forward to seeing that tomorrow, and uh, we're rooting for you again one more time tomorrow. But appreciate you coming All up. Right. Congratulations Thanks. on a big All win. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bo Sheets, head coach of the River and Wolverines joining us here on the Bailey Tire and Auto post game show. Uh, Jason, I'm struggling with uh, my selection of the Tyler Watson State Farm player of the game here. Do you want to you want to jump on and give your thoughts, Jason? You're right, Jared. It is kind of tough. I mean, Riverton come out. They played really good tonight. Um, I'm I'm probably going to go out on a limb and just. I'm going to have to go Parker tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd come out. And, I mean, you know, he missed some threes, made some big, made, missed some big shots. But, I mean, he come in and, I mean, it's, you're right. It's kind of hard to pick, but I'd go Parker tonight. Yeah, Parker Paxton, I thought, had a great game. And because Jason Peterson says Parker Paxton will select him as our <laughs> Tyler Watson State Farm player of the game, uh, give Tyler a call for all your insurance needs. Tyler Watson, a proud Wolverine athletic supporter. And obviously, we could go Derek DeVries, 24 mm -hmm. points, had yep. a brilliant night tonight. We did to select him as our last player of the night, game yep. last night. Yep. So uh, it was good to get Parker on the microphone, and he was great. I also thought Ty Sheets had a really clutch game, 10 points, played really well, and then some of the kids off the bench again did great. Just an overall team victory. So mm -hmm. yep. a good win tonight for the Wolverines. It was fun to watch him, and uh, let's, let's do it all over again tomorrow, Jason. Looking, looking forward to one more. Absolutely. Jason and I will be back with you you tomorrow from Laramie High School be about a one o'clock start projected for girls basketball 230 for the boys want to give a big thank you to everybody on our YouTube channel for watching along and our listening audience on 1051 Jack FM final score is one more time tonight in the Lady Wolverines game it was Cheyenne South knocking off Riverton 36 to 28 Riverton boys come up victorious tonight 66 to 20 we will see you tomorrow afternoon for those of you on Jack FM, we'll send you back to uh, some music here in just a moment. And for those of you on County10.com, we will say good night and have a great Friday.